they bag a lot of projects. So, uh, ang ibig sabihin po nito, naikot-to na po yung buong Saudi Arabia sa mga projects, both indoor and outdoor. Okay, so, yan po. This is uh, the projects that I handled, more on the technical, survey, design, installation, and supervision, and optimization for uh, indoor and uh, outdoor networks. Okay, so I hope kilala nyo ito yung mga uh, companies na ito. It's uh, more of the vendors and yung mga uh, telecom operators there. And ito din po yung mga projects that I handled uh, before and uh, currently. And makakalimutan uh, pa natin yung mga webinars since this is part of uh, our mandate. If uh, you are knowledgeable to be a speaker, so why not uh, uh, contribute or share your uh, knowledge and experience? So ito po, isa po ako sa DICT, then our community, Art in Jewish Pilipinas. And of course, I was invited uh, the very first time sa ISEP Rizal. Sila po yung unang nag-tap sa akin and uh, hindi pa ako na dalawang isip na, na mag-collaborate, uh, coordinate, and uh, merge with them to to give a one of the first uh, collaborative uh, webinars na ginawa noong 2020. So, ISEP Rizal also included... Uh, Tap me, BICP again, and again, uh, ISEP Rizal, and of course, ISEP Laguna, National Students Chapter, again, ISEP Laguna with uh, ISEP Singapore and other distinguished uh, chapters, and our local uh, junior ISEP. So I was very happy, even for the junior ISEP, at least. Uh, hindi po natin mapapabayaan yung ating mga uh, students po, ECE students. And of course, the ICT tap me again and again. And also, there is one specific uh, webinar, which is this Wi-Fi and 5G. Actually, I was uh, uh, referred by Engineer Lyle Villas, uh, direct uh, Lyle, that somebody will, you know, uh, message me. And I was surprised that yung me refer sa akin ni Sir Lyle is the other professional group. So ganun pala katindi ang ISEP, ang ECE. So we are already heard by other professionals. And uh, this Eastern Summer State University, they invited me for their computer engineering students. And their professionals, the Institute of Computer Engineers of the Philippines, uh, they taught me and uh, I, I shared to them uh, a free webinar. And they were also uh, overwhelmed and uh, joyful that uh, and even me, I, I, I as represented or representing as an ECE, so uh, napalaking, napakalaking halaga din kasi uh, we were known by other professionals and uh, uh, also we need to be proud as well. Okay? So, the ICT from regional office stopped me. And again, in regional office of the ICT, again, I said Rizal. And the first technical webinar here at home in Sox Sargent. So, this is very, you know, uh, a deep dive in 5G. And upcoming webinars for the Women's Month of the ICT, uh, free Wi-Fi project uh, division. So they taught me. So hindi pa ako nang dalawang isip uh, since uh, this knowledge is for all naman po. So that's it. So I am your resource speaker and I hope uh, marami na pong nakakagala sa akin. Okay. So let's get the ball rolling. And eto, this is my webinar outline. Uh, this is actually shortened because uh, napakaraming uh, topics talaga ang 5G. But this is more on the uh, uh, external side. Let's just say external side kasi uh, hindi naman pwede natin pabayaan yung mga uh, basics going to the fundamentals. Uh, hindi naman natin maintindihan yung fundamentals without the basics by the way. So uh, we need to know and we need to understand fully 
ano ba yung nangyayari within terms of 5G when they were standardized, they were, uh, you know, uh, nasa R&D and of course, paano na commercialize. Okay? So, ito po yung mga pagkakas na nangyari. Uh, just like before, nung 4G pa lang tayo, 4G LTE, and when 5G arrived, uh, uh, that was two years ago, and uh, nag-roll out po yung mga uh, telcos natin, including, including the third uh, telco operator, which is the D2 uh, telecommunity. So we experience slowly yung changes within terms sa services na, na gusto natin as end users. So ito po yung outline for 5G. And later, for the second part, the webinar outline for 6G. So gaya ng sinabi ko, yung keyword po dito is vision. Dahil ang sinabi ni Engineer Tan, vision. Kasi wala pa pong 6G network by the way. But we are going there onwards as per roadmap since ito naman is part of the 10-year plan. So every 10 years, there is a new technolo uh, technology or yung generation ng ating mobile communications. So it is a 10-year plan. Uh, maybe they will uh, introduce commercially uh, in the market as early as uh, a year. So that's better. Uh, but if they will make a target exactly after a 10-year plan, so that is also great. So here, mapapansin nyo, vision, that will be the keyword that we'll be using later on as a vision. Okay. So here, uh, nagtataka kayo bakit yung United Nations or yung goal, which is the Sustainable Development Goal of United Nations, it is a 17-point uh, uh, role or goal developed by United Nations. And by the way, ITU-R or ITU, International Telecommunications Union, is one of the 15 old organizations under the UN. So, ibig sabihin, one of the standardization uh, organizations is uh, partly made by ITU, which is under United Nations, a specialized, uh, one of the old specialized uh, organization under UN. So UN introduced these goals. And as you can see, one or, or a two or, or three points there is closely related to telecommunications. Bakit? Telecommunications can give us to a sustainable uh, support to these goals uh, laid down by the United Nations, which, which is the SDG. Sana nakikita nyo, uh, point, uh, goal number 14, 15, or almost all of it, telecommunications can contribute. So how can telecommunications contribute to this uh, goals of uh, laid down or a framework laid down by uh, United Nations. So, for good health and well-being, goal number three, telecommunications can also contribute. Why? Through the uh, use of the e-healthcare. So, that's one point we, we already contributed. And also, for the goal number nine, which is the industry innovation infrastructure, that is also considered that telecommunications can also contribute to the sustainable goal of uh, United Nations. And uh, as well as the rest, which is uh, telecommunications can give a contribution to the society. Yun po yung ibig sabihin dito. So uh, we should be proud uh, bilang electronics engineers specialized in telecommunications that we are already contributing. Even if, if you are uh, working in a contracting company or even the telco, you are already, let's just assume that you are already contributing to the goals of UN. And this is not just, uh, this is a uh, worldwide scale, itong sustainable goal, okay? So there are other countries that, you know, very less fortunate, but with these goals, uh, laid down by 
the uh, uh, UN and when 6G will come, hopefully 6G, 5G and 6G, uh, along with the frontliners, which is uh, us, electronics uh, engineers, specializing in telecommunications, hopefully we can contribute to the society uh, because of this SDG, okay? And of course, hindi natin pwede kalimutan yung evolution. Just as a refresher, at least we will know how far the generations pave way to the evolution of our services. So, napa, napakalaking halaga. Uh, just, you know, even just to have a refresher on this, at least you will know that malaking contribution ang nagawa ng uh, telecommunications sa ating society. With, without these generations, even, uh, you know, if we're talking about uh, globally, we, without this mobile uh, technology evolution, uh, I, I don't know kung saan na tayo ngayon, uh, how, how can we communicate, uh, even if we, we are talking about 1G or 2G, uh, just like what Engineer Tan said, without, without the evolution taking its uh, toll in the society, paano po natin, or paano tayo makakapag-communicate? That is one. Uh, basic requirement in communication, di ba? So, uh, we are very, very, very fortunate that we are already uh, still alive and enjoying uh, 5G. And uh, hopefully, we can uh, still experience 6G after 10 years. So, that will be on year 2030. So, as you can see, guys, yung napapansin nyo dito, 5G, it is mainly composed of these three distinct use case scenario or requirements. That is very important as uh, on our discussion as we go along. Kasi without these three or even yung isa sa tatlo ay hindi achievable, we still cannot say as end users na ito na talaga yung totoong 5G. But it doesn't mean that the operators are not working on their end, they are slowly, slowly, and uh, they are uh, in progression na ginagawa din po nila as operators na they are slowly, you know, fixing and uh, upgrading our services. So we will uh, be, you know, kailangan maging uh, patient po tayo in terms of the services and uh, the infrastructures that uh, they are uh, upgrading or installing. Kasi hindi po madali mag-install ng mga infrastructures. How much more on the end-to-end -end part? Like doon sa data center, they will wait for the infrastructure uh, to be fully completed. If there are expansion sites that uh, needed to be expanded on your locality, for example, syempre, hindi pa tapos yung trabaho doon. They, they need to check on the core network side. So, hindi po madali. Uh, hopefully, makapaghintay po kayo. Uh, and uh, parating din yung ating uh, inaasam-asam na totoong 5G. Okay? So, eto po. We need to understand also this one. Yung mga releases. So, sir, ano po yung ibig sabihin ng releases? Releases, as per 3GPP or yung third generation partnership project, this is a composition of well-known uh, manufacturers, uh, organizations, vendors, or even telecom operators. So uh, these organizations under 3GPP group or partnership group, sila po yung uh, in charge for releasing such standards. So kada release, Ang ibig sabihin nun is merong bagong enhancement enhancement for the 5G or even for the 6G. Even bumagana na po yung 5G, tuloy pa rin sila nagbibigay ng mga releases. Why? For the sole purpose to enhance the network infrastructure and as well in parallel yung ating mga services na natatanggap. So, ga ganun po ang trabaho nila. Hindi po basta-basta. So, as for their timeline, and also it was mentioned by our distinct, distinguished uh, 
uh, uh, PFPO awardee, si Engineer Tan, that we will wait on 2030 sa 6G. And right now, 5G, as you can see, we are already in release 17. So if you want to know more kung ano yung nilalaman ng release 17, uh, 3GPP release 17, there are detailed uh, information kung ano yung mga enhancements. So just, you know, uh, visit 3GPP.org. Uh, let me type. 3GPP.org and you will see there the full information ng kada release. Full information ng kada release because uh, if we will discuss it uh, uh, one by one, sa daming release, baka hindi po natin ma, ma, baka sumobra po tayo sa oras. So uh, just check in 3GPP.org. Uh, you will have it there. Everything po. Kada release. Because once you understand kada kada release na ito yung mga enhancements na nilabas ni 3GPP, you will know that ganito pala ang ginagawa nila. Just to standardize. Standardization pa lang yan. How much more if they will implement it commercially and marireceive mo yung uh, servisyo na yun, you will really be enjoying more of the 5G services. Okay? So 5.5, hopefully uh, 2023, 20, 2024, we will be having 5.5G. So enhancements po yan, kaya meron po kayong narinig na 5.25, 5.5, tapos 5.75, just like before, yung LTE uh, Advanced, LTE Advanced Pro, L LTE Advanced Pro with the carrier aggregation. So ganun po yung mga enhancements ang ibig kong sabihin. Okay, and for the timeline per technology, uh, just to share to you guys, noon merong mga technologies, standardizations or standards, kada technology merong ibang na-approve, meron din ibang hindi in-approve. Okay, so napapansin nyo, uh, every research plan, vision, standardization, approval, sakayan ni nilo-launch. Hindi yan basta-basta nilalabas yung uh, generation or yung technology pag hindi dumaan sa mga uh, tedious, uh, I should say tedious, napaka uh, hindi na screening, uh, approvals ng mga uh, standardization uh, development organizations, including ITU. Dash R. Kasi sila yung nagpapa-approve niyan sa mga standards na ginawa saka ilalabas. So ganun katindi yung ginagawa pa nila behind the scenes without us knowing. Uh, hindi pala natin alam at tayo end users lang but ito pala yung ginagawa nila. Nap napakalaking uh, halaga yung ginagawa nila just to make a standard uh, revisions and dun na submission approvals, tapos sigurado may mga re rejections yan, disapproval, so uh, malaki yung uh, ginawa nila as uh, uh, standardization organizations. So 6G, they're already starting right now. As you can see, ni launch, ni labas noong 2019, ang 5G worldwide Worldwide, I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking uh, specifically for Philippines. I'm talking about uh, globally. Noong nilabas 2019 yung 5G, inumpisan kaagad yung research ng 6G. Ganon katindi pala. So, uh, ganon ang trabaho ng mga organizations na yun. Just for us, for our convenience as end users. Okay? So, I hope you understand na ito pala yung nangyayari behind the scenes that uh, kahit tayo hindi natin alam. Okay, so ito yung standardization process. ITU will be one of the uh, approving uh, uh, branches or union under the United Nations. So they are one of the oldest of the 15 agencies of UN. So they are responsible for, ano yung keyword dito? Issue. 
issuing the concern information and the communications technology. They are, sabi natin, para madaling maintindihan, they are one of the uh, ones who will, you know, uh, approve and issue na ito, okay na ang itong uh, standard na ito for 6G, uh, this and that. So, ganun katindi pala. And of course, if we are talking about ITU, uh, dash R, that's the radio communications part. So, dyan po uh, nagpo-fall under yung ating mobile telecommunications. So, as you can see, uh, as per ITU, ang tawag ng 5G is IMD 2020. That is their like a technical name for 5G. Actually, 5G, it is a commercial name. Okay? So, what do they do? This ITU dash R. It is the radio communications part and it is responsible for creating the conditions and harmonizing the development and efficient operation of the existing radio communication systems, even the new. So, hindi lang uh, issuance or approval for such standards na nilabas ni TGPP, kasama pa rin yung mga ano, conditions and the development of the existing at saka yung parating na mga bago. So, they are like, you know, meron silang mandate bilang isang malaking uh, specialized branch ng United Nations. So, ganun katindi pala yung ginagawa din. They, 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 they also act as if it is like a governing body. Ika nga. Okay? So, eto. ITU. And napapansin nyo guys, ano itong mga range of future features that 5G should offer us. Actually, napakarami. But as per 3GPP and uh, ITU, ang pinaka-importante doon para masasabi natin na talagang totoo itong 5G na uh, na experience natin, the three important should be there or it should operate. And that will be what? Yung tinatawag na EMBB, UR LLC, and yung uh, pinaka-importante which is yung uh, massive uh, communications. Okay? Itong tatlo lang yung pinaka-importante. The rest, the rest will follow. The rest will follow. But what is, what's important is this three. So if you understand this three, you will know that because of this three uh, distinct use case requirement, made by 3GPP, dito na po, ito po yung roots, ito po yung root or yung pinanggalingan kung paano dinevelop yung 6G, which is, I will show it to you later. Uh, dahil dito sa tatlo, these three distinct use cases paved the way on how other research and development uh, institutes other vendors, other companies, and other uh, dis, uh, distinguished uh, universities in Finland, in, in uh, uh, Hawaii, I think, that they made researches based on these three. Binasi nila dito sa tatlo. Okay? So, ito yung ibig ko sabihin, mga standardization development organizations. Standards development organizations. So, governed by ITU uh, under UN and of course these are the organizations under 3GP which is ETSI I3E which is also responsible for the uh, Bluetooth Wi-Fi and other standards given fiber optics okay kay I3E po yan ang dami din yang uh, standards and they are one of the SDOs so para din silang isang group, 3GPP, that they are working hand in, hand in hand and sharing a common goal on 
making such standards para lang sa atin. So, ganun katindi ang kanilang uh, ginagawa para sa atin. Okay? So, as you can see, sino yung si 3GPP? Eto sila. And, as you can see, napapansin nyo, it is composed of first world countries. First world countries, if I will say first world countries, it is composed of, you know, US, Japan, and China, even Korea. Even Korea. So, ganun yung partnership nila because they are sharing a common goal. So, ganun. Ganun, ganun sila mag, magawa ng mga standards. And uh, these standards is uh, for us and including 6G po. Okay? So, as per evolution sa timeline ni International Telecommunications Union, eto, mas detailed. Bakit? Noong 1990, eto pa yung pinaka-first organization since 1990, 1G at saka 2G po yan. So, it is under GSM na group. So, 2G, as you can see, 2G. And yung kulay niya, if you observe, 2G, yung kulay niya is here. Under the circuit switch na technology or na network. Circuit switch. Ito. So, this is uh, roughly around 1990s and onwards. Under the GSM uh, uh, organization. And yung workable na technology lang is 2G. Circuit switch po yung klase ng network kasi analog. If you say analog, so ito yung sinabi niya, voice and SMS. And as the time progresses, until such time that merong enhancements just like CSFB or yung circuit switch fallback going from 3G to 2G, from data to voice, so ma-accommodate yung voice uh, voice uh, request or pagtatawag yung isang uh, caller, for example, if he is in idle mode or active mode siya sa 3G, para hindi naman ma-compromise or ma-congest, ma para ma-decongest ang 3G, that is one of the features ng CSFB. They will be fall back to the previous uh, network which is 2G kasi ang kailangan lang na servisyo or yung request ng caller is just purely voice. So not to waste some resources here on the current video, for example, they use or they introduce this uh, CSFP so that at the same time, maka-decongest po tayo sa 3G uh, resources, gagamit po tayo ng 2G. So ganun po yung isang feature. Until uh, dumating yung 3G na part on year 2000, and it is now composed of a circuit switch network and a packet switch network. So uh, it is now inter interoperating on uh, two functions, which is uh, some of it is analog and most of it is uh, digital. Until such time na uh, na introduce po yung CSFB, kaya na ko, to 3G to 2G, and even 4G to 3G, 2G. Until na streamline po ni ITU na naging 4G na. For, so starting 4G, this is wh where we can call uh, the start of the all IP-based network, itong 4G. Pero sir, paano mo nasabi na all IP na? Eh, bakit makakatawag pa rin ako? Yes, you can still call a pure voice call but yan na po yung uh, function ni IMS yung IMS ang tawag namin IMS or yung uh, Internet Protocol Multimedia Subsystem that you can make a call using those channels from the 4G network dahil dinagdag yung IMS or yung IP multimedia subsystem sa 
3G, kaya naging 4G na siya, we can still use voice, but in a digital form. Kaya merong tinatawag na voice over Wi-Fi, voice over LTE, and right now, uh, yung tinatawag po natin na, ano, over NR, or yung voice in the 5G network. Voice over NR po ang tawag na. So, as you can see here, dito sa vision, nakikita nyo, hindi ito mawawala itong tatlo. These three distinct use case requirements, dito na nag-umpisa yung much more and bigger chunks of bandwidth, more lowered, lowered, I, I didn't say fixed yung 1 millisecond kasi as per target, 1 millisecond yung latency. So wala nang lag. Hindi na kayo mamamroblema pag, pag maglalaro kayo ng mga mobile apps or mobile games. Wala nang lag. There is still lag. But, you know, this is part of the evolution. So that will be the uh, one of the roles of uh, our operators that they need to enhance more or they need to check what are the the related factors on how they will uh, enhance more or or make the, the performance much better especially uh, in terms of latency ito URLLC kasi ito yung pinakaimportante this EMVB and MMTC or yung uh, enhanced mobile broadband which is that is uh, uh, three times more faster than uh, 4G, yung throughput speed, download speed. And yung MMTC is yung massive mobile uh, uh, connectivity. And uh, by the way, guys, MMTC is also the other word for massive IoT. Kaya yung IoT, we can power, power up IoT using 5G networks as, as well as 6G. So gaya ng sinabi ko sa... Uh, previous webinars ko, 5G is one. 5G is one of the enabler of IoT. Sir, akala ko si 5G lang yung enabler. Sino pala yung iba? The other technology that can enable IoT is Wi-Fi. And if we will make Wi-Fi on a bigger scale, eto na po, wireless LAN, and you can use what six or even Wi-Fi six E or even in the future, yan they will or they are one of the emerging technologies in the future. Sa sabayan, sa sabayan sa sa five G at saka sa six G. So ganon katindi or wireless LAN is one but is also one of the enablers of IoT okay so here eto yung ibig kong sabihin this is the more detailed uh, vision noon vision noon na kasi meron ng 5G so hindi na ito vision but this is just sort of a review na eto yung vision ni ITU dash R or International Telecommunications Union for the radio communications part Ito yung vision, pero nangyari na. Nangyari na. But still, there are there, there are still uh, more room for improvement ni kanino, ni operator. Kasi si operator nagbibigay ng mga servisyo. So, they still have more rooms for their improvement for our services, which is 5G. And kahit na kahit na uh, na-achieve natin yung yung dalawa which is si MMTC at saka si EMBB pag hindi natin ma-achieve yung URLLC or yung latency latency na na issue or latency na concern it will affect the other two okay so ganun ganun ka importante they are working in harmony itong tatlo itong triangle na to pa Pag nakaroon ng delay, you know what will be the other outcome that you will experience, which is medyo mawawala sa target yung ating uh, download speed, which is under EMBB. And also, 
pag merong delay, minsan merong ma disconnect na mga connected devices. Kaya nga sinabi, massive connectivity. E paano yan pag may mga delay in the latency, which is also very crucial in 5G and as well as, as, well as in 6G. So, hindi na siya achievable. Tama ba? Okay? So, do you agree guys? Para sa naman interactive, do you agree on what I have just said with regards to this triangle? Type yes or you can uh, type no if you want. So, uh, you can uh, put it as a question later. So, uh, naiintindihan niyo ba po? Participants? So, okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. So, I'm very happy that you understand. Kahit Papi ako pa lang ito, while we are uh, on the way, going to the last part of the slide. So, uh, I am uh, much more happy na meron kayong mga takeaways. Okay? So, as you can see here, inside the triangle, ito yung mga maibibigay ni 5G. Ito yung maibibigay ni 5G. So, uh, one of the slides, uh, since triangle is also uh, we can say triangle is also an example of a polygon. Tama po ba? So, triangle is also a polygon. So, meron siyang tatlong sides. So, as you can see, guys, just analyze it by looking at the uh, presentation. Yung isang side, ito yung may ibibigay niya. 3D video 4K screens, work and play in the cloud. So, gaya ng sinabi ni Engineer Gerhard Tan, cloud computing, edge computing is also part of the 5G enhancements, part of the releases. If you will uh, visit 3GPP.org, I'm sure isa doon or one of the many or lahat sila is part of the release enhancements. Itong augmented virtual reality, industrial and vehicular automation, Mission critical, which is important, our healthcare, our healthcare sector, dyan po uh, nagpo-fall sa mission critical broadband. So this is important. On the other side naman of the triangle, ang maibibigay is yung ano, sensor networks, yung mga self-driving cars. And on the other side naman of the triangle, one of the side of the triangle, yung smart and automation. So, ganun po pag-analyze nitong triangle. So, malaki. Malaki yung may bibigay. Ang daming services na may bibigay. Not just sa uh, customer side, but even sa industry side. Okay? So, doon sa naka-participate sa aking uh, uh, deep dive in 5G, uh, I... Uh, discuss it there kung anong klaseng mga industry uh, services na binibigay or maibibigay as per request ng isang company sa telecom operator with, with uh, when it comes to 5G. Okay? So, eto. Eto yung mga requirements. Eto, this is more clear. This is more clear to understand, guys. So, under the enhanced mobile broadband, ito yung mga targets talaga. Sir, nalilito ako, bakit merong 10 G GP uh, gigabits per second yung download uh, throughput speed, merong 100 Mbps? Saan ba yung totoo? Actually, yung dalawa totoo. Pero tingnan nyo yung nakasulat. 100 Mbps whenever needed. Ibig sabihin, pag peak hours or even medyo malayo yung medyo malayo yung uh, 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 location mo sa physical na 5G tower, 100 Mbps siguradong yan yung ibibigay sa'yo. But this is the requirement. There is also subject for change. Sir, parang binibiro yun mo yata ako. Sir, sabi mo, 100 Mbps, sure na sure yan, kahit mahina ang signal. This is a requirement, but I did not say, or ITU did not say na sure na yan. There is still subject for change. Bakit? 
kung ikaw ay isang design engineer working in a telecommunications industry, maiintindihan ninyo kung ano yung ibig kong sabihin. Kasi maraming factors involved on why 5G mabagal. Maraming sinasabi na scam siguro ito, puro, puro marketing strategy lang, mabagal yung 5G dito sa area ko. But if you are a telecommunications engineer or if you are an RF engineer or electronics engineer specializing telecommunications, maiintindihan mo yan kasi maraming uh, factors involved just like the, the, the physical cell tower is away. Even, for example, uh, the cell tower is near to your current location, but the maximum users or even the maximum uh, channels itong single cell is not enough for the whole people to be served in your area. For example, isang barangay o dalawang barangay. Eh, kung konektado kayo lahat, so the bandwidth will drastically be divided as per the user ano, user uh, utilization. Ibig sabihin, kada user, iba-iba yung utilization rate. Kasi baka yung iba, tumatawag lang, nag-chat-chat lang, uh, using the social media. Yung iba naman nag-download, yung iba naman naglalaro. So, the resources per cell, tapos ito yung maximum na hindi natin alam, that is what I mean na one of the many factors involved, kaya bakit masasabi ng iba na mabagal yung 5G, scam yan, Tapos sinabi ni Sir, kahit peak hours, sigurado 100 Mbps. Yes, because it is a requirement. But it doesn't say that ito yung exact na makukuha mo. This is still subject for change. So, dyan na na naman papasok yung telecom operators natin on how they will improve the, our services so that yung ating user experience will be good. Okay? User experience will be good. So, if I'm talking about user experience, lahat-lahat na how you are appreciating the service, how you, you will assess the service. Uy, kumanda na yung 5G dito sa lugar ko. Uy, wala nang lag pag naglalaro ako ng ML. Yung mga ganun na mga realidad. Okay? So if we will compare reality with this uh, uh, webinar or even webinars, lahat ng webinars ng, ng ICEP National, dyan mo compare. You will have a comparison in the actual scenario, yung realidad na ganito pala. Tama si sir, uh, malaking bagay pala yung, yung ginagawa ng mga electronics engineers. Malaking bagay dahil ito pala yung rason bakit uh, nasabi ko na babagal yung 5G dito sa aking location. So it's maybe it's possible it is in your location. But how about in the metro cities which is uh, the 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 let's just say the top priority uh, phases or sabi natin phase 1 doon inumpisahan kasi nandoon yung much needed importance on the expansion of the 5G network. Kasi nandun yung maraming tao, hindi sa probinsya eh. Tapos ikaw nasa probinsya. So, uh, ikaw yung second priority. Ika nga. But still, you are under the priority of the telecom operators. And you will be uh, part of the rollout or expansion ng telcos. So, that is what I mean. Uh, uh, it is just a requirement, but it is still until now, or maybe hanggang umabot to 6G, these requirements by ITU under the INT 2020 will still be subject for change. So change is yun. Uh, mabagal minsan, but not all areas in the Philippines, mabagal yung 5G. Okay? So ito, uh, if you read while I was talking, if you read all the requirements, ganito pala katindi. And again, latency on the radio interface, because we're talking about wireless, on the radio interface thing, 
hoping that the requirement is achieve, achievable in the actual scenario, yung sa totoong buhay. But I'm sure, as what I showed you on my speed test, or if you can uh, check sa smartphone niyo, if you are, uh, if you have uh, 5G inserted on your SIM card tray, pwede niyong itest right now na in your position, current position, and current location, pag labas kayo dun sa metropolis area or you are outside Metro Manila, you can check uh, right away on your smartphone if you have a, a 5G SIM card. You can check the latency. Yan ang pinag-importante, latency. Yes, because why? If you will check uh, just like speedtest.net by UCLA, mapapansin mo na merong da ibang parameters not just latency. There is jitter and packet loss. Yung dalawa, the higher the latency, tumataas din yung value ng jitter at saka yung packet loss. Why? Because may mga delay and we don't know the delay is causing because of the intermittent connection. Maybe the delay because the data center is very, very far away from the Philippines. Or maybe yung isang data center pero host lang, hindi siya physical na data center na infrastructure, host server lang, pero yung data center pala nasa Hong Kong, pinadaan lang dito sa server sa loob ng Pilipinas, eh hindi natin masasabi na, na data center na yan. It is just a server. A host server by the data center which is outside the Philippines. So, mataas yung latency. So, paano, paano natin masasabi na totoong 5G yan? So, we will leave it to the operators and hopefully, uh, magagawa nila yung, yung ating uh, needs. Hopefully, they will build a physical data center here inside the Philippines and hopefully, it can mitigate or even eradicate, hopefully, yung latency issues na na-experience natin. Okay, so I hope it's clear. So next, eto, eto yung sinasabi ko. Marami silang sinasubmit, marami silang pinapa-approve ni 3GPP. Okay, and as you can see, not stand alone, and stand alone, that is the deployment and migration option. Sir, hindi ko maintindihan yung ibig mo sabihin. Ang ibig ko sabihin, this is related to the configuration as per hardware. Hardware, ibig sabihin, yung infrastructure na ng isang cell so if I'm talking about isang cell, isang cell tower po. So if we're talking about, just like here, uh, NSA for 5G, it is combined as a 4G plus 5G. Sir, nalilito pa rin ako. Sabi mo 5G, pat merong 4G? Ang tawag yan is ENDC. ENDC ang tawag yan, sir. ENDC. So, ibig sabihin, ENDC, it is dual, merong dual connectivity na na feature. Yung core network, parang ganito, core network, going to the RAN, and going to the mga cells natin or yung BTS, and going to us users. So, ganun po yung pagkaintindi. Pero sir, hindi ko maintindihan pa rin. Ano ibig sabihin ng DC? Dual connected kasi 4G, 5G. Pero sir, sabi mo 5G. but meron bang 4G tapos dual connected? Because uh, they are, you know, uh, using and utilizing the frequencies from 4G and 5G and also the existing hardware which is still more partly sa 4G. Okay? Sir, anong ibig sabihin ng EM? EM is, gaya na sinabi ko, because it is 4G and 5G, you can uh, denote it, denote, or you can say it as EPC plus NR. Okay? You can say it or you can denote it as EPC plus NR, sir. EPC under 4G, yes. 
NNR is under 5G, yes. So, kaya dual connectivity. Because if NSA, non-stand alone, there is still 4G physical hardwares and even the configurations that we are still using. It is not yet yung tinatawag na eto ang tinatawag na true 5G no wala pa tayo sa true 5G but because as per my research uh, also to me tingin din sa ibang forums na gumagawa pa until now yang mga manufacturers kung ano yung gagamitin para sa true 5G or yung tinatawag na natin na 5G stand alone. Actually, wala pang stand alone na 5G. I'm very sure. I'm very sure. So, we are still slowly migrating even sa core network, even sa radio access part sa RAN and even on the BTS side or yung tinatawag namin na BSS or yung base station subsystem, they are also migrating and evolving. Okay? Gaya nung webinar ko last time sa SOC Sergeant, uh, I was focusing more on the evolution and migration doon sa core network at saka sa RAN. But here, I'm talking about from the BSS part, yung non-standalone and standalone changes that will happen sooner or later talaga. It is inevitable. Inevitable, what I mean from the word inevitable, it is unpredictable. We don't know, baka bukas, stand alone na ang 5G dito sa Pilipinas. We don't know because we are not the supplier, we are not the vendor. Uh, swerte po kayo if you are currently working in uh, uh, the op as the operator. So maganda, di ba? So, yun yung ibig kong sabihin. Okay, so, yes, uh, from the co control plane, it is still controlled by 4G. Yes, it is, it is, it is uh, very obvious po. Uh, for the control plane, it is still under the 4G system. But for the data or the user plane, meron na pong control dyan si 5G. Sa user plane lang kasi yun yung tinatanggap ng mga users. Kaya nga tawag, very obvious user plane. So that is under the caps caps sa uh, ano caps na evolution kasi sa 5G going to 6G separate na po yung yung control plane at saka yung user plane para para siya para hindi ba ma-compromise yung mga resources from the core network at saka merong uh, or shall we say maintain maintain end to end yung latency Okay, so if you attended my webinar doon sa SOC Sargent, mas detalyado yung sinabi ko po doon. Okay, so here, syempre, pag sinabing migration, meron yung roadmap, di ba? The map leading to the evolution of our uh, existing and emerging technology. Yan po yung ibig sabihin. So, roadmap, ito po. So, napapansin mo, Napapansin niyo po, so China also gave a contribution. Pero pagdating sa 4G, 4G uh, first release ng 4G, naging streamlined. Naging streamlined po. Kaya nga tinawag is, it is an all IP network. So dyan nag-umpisa, streamlined until dumating papunta sa 5G. But as you can see, sa mga previous uh, generations, ang daming ano, modulation technique na ginamit from CDMA using codes, using the time, and using the frequency. Diba? If you understand, uh, guys, for those uh, students who are watching, I'm sure you are familiar with this uh, multiple access technique, itong CDMA, TDMA, FDMA, because they are still part of the uh, evolution kung hindi na discovery or na introduce itong mga multiple access techniques I am very sure na baka ngayon wala pa sigurong 4G or 5G 
Okay, so napaka, napala, napakalaking halaga itong mga multiple, multiple access techniques or, or yung, ang ibig ko sabihin yung modulation. Okay, yung theory, yung practice, so ganun. Okay, so here, eto napaka-importante to because this is oh, this is a you know uh, this is a very important information for you guys so naming naming of these networks okay so as you can see eto yung ginawa ni ITU in collaboration with 3GPP eto yung pangalan nila actually so sa marketing name if uh, you are working as a sales team under the operators or even uh, ISPs. So, ang tawag niyan, for marketing name, 3G, it's 3G. Okay? 4G, is just 4G. 5G, is just 5G. But for the IT unit, it's totally different. They call 3G as IMT 2000, then IMT Advanced, and then IMT 2020. So, of course, very, very much related ang ipinangalan nila kay 5G under ITU name, technical name, which is IMT 2020. Kasi ito naman yung target line. Ito yung, this is part of their uh, plan that every 10 years, there is new emerging technology na ilalabas nila. So, tamang-tama. IMT 2020, their target na ilalabas yung 5G, which is correct, di ba? Then, sa 3GPP name, 3G is called UMTS or yung Universal Mobile Terrestrial uh, System. Okay? Then next is the LTE Advanced or yung pure LTE noon. Kasama na dito yung LTE Advanced Pro for the enhancements or we call it long-term evolution. And of course, 3GPP name for 5G is also 5G. And for the radio access uh, part and the core network and the system name, yan na po sila. Okay? So... I hope it's uh, clear. Is it clear, guys? Before I'll uh, proceed, uh, clear po ba? Para sa inyo? Hindi ba mahirap? Okay, thank you. So, next, again, this is a review to compare and also for what I have said uh, a while ago with regards to the yung naging streamline po starting from LTE going to 5G and onwards. Okay? So, ito, of course, Sabi, sabi nila, noon, nung hindi pa inintroduce yung tatlong use case requirements for 5G, yung hindi pa inintroduce itong triangle, itong tatsulok, dati, 2G, 3G, 4G, ano yung target natin noon? Ito. Our target before was to have you know more data ito ito talaga i'm sure i'm sure sa mga sa mga seniors natin dito uh, uh, watching ito talaga dati nung wala pang 4G yung ilalabas pa lang si 4G noon dito sa Pilipinas ito na talaga yung naging trend ah mabilis na daw si 4G tapos yung speed mabilis kasi ito yung focus area noon ng operators but right now the focus area became wider. Ito talaga ang ifo-focus natin, not just for the throughput speed, but the whole the whole area of the tatsulok, yung triangle. Bakit? Because it is very important because hindi na po just for the, you know, users known for this is for the users but involved na po dito yung industriya so they focus the, the the 5G technologies for these three kailangan talaga itong tatlo ang focus ng mga operators so this includes the industries kaya nasabi ko kanina hindi na po ito para sa mga tao but this is this 5G and even 6G, this is also very much, very much useful in the industry. And that includes all logistics, healthcare, uh, traffic, security, governance, 
Okay, lahat na po. So here, this is the comparison. This is based on, you know, uh, as per research, for the connection density talaga, nakikita no, connection density, and even uh, latency, malaki yung difference. Kasi as per research po, 2G for the latency, wala problema kasi uh, hindi pa ganun ka sophisticated yung mga services na ino-offer yung 2G noon. But as the what? As the uh, technologies are evolving, nagiging mababa na po yung latency. Kaya nga ito yung pinakaimportanteng parameter doon sa triangle na ito yung dapat nating tugunan ng pansin. Itong latency talaga. Okay? So the rest, we can achieve it as long as the latency is improved. So wala pong problema nun. Okay? So ito yung ibig sabihin ng stand-alone at saka non-stand-alone. So it is merely like a master-slave na system if we're going to say uh, ano po yung ibig sabihin ng NSA at saka SA. So as you can see, and also from my previous webinars, there is a plan on how they will slowly, slowly make their hardware, for example, on how NSA and they will migrate it to the true 5G or yung stand-alone na. So, ito po yung ibig sabihin nito. So, even 5G, it can also be the master and 4G, it can also be the slave. But as of this time, si master talaga is sino? si LTE for now. So, ito po yung ibig sabihin. This is the important options. Kaya nga ang tawag deployment and migration strategy. Kasi hindi pa po natin masasabi na meron ng naimbento na stand-alone devices ginagawa pa lang nila ng mga manufacturers. So right now, since kung ano yung meron tayo ngayon, we will utilize it. Because why? That is also, you know, that is also one example on how an operator is making a cost-effective way on what? Slowly migrating their hardware kasi mil milyones yung pinag-uusapan dito eh so hindi po hindi po yan madali if you are an, a telecom operator hindi po yan madali if you are talking about hundreds or even tens and hundreds thousands of cell sites across the Philippines napakarami so ganun po mag-analyze ganun din katindi at ganun po yung value in terms of pesos, millions po, billions po ang na-invest nila. So of course, kung ano yung meron na pwede natin i-utilize so that it can also be usable for 5G, yan po yung ginawa nila. It is a strategy. Ito. So saan tayo ngayon? Option one, it is of course... Pure LTE, option one, stand alone siya. But as the, <coughs> excuse me, as the time progresses, syempre, in-enhance nila yung network physically. So, ginagawa nila itong migration strategy from the where? Mostly on the uh, BSS part. Okay, BSS part po. Napapansin nyo, BSS part yan. Okay, so, ano yung una? Ito. Today, 4G networks, but it is not, this is the past already. Okay? So, yan po. Option 1, SA, LTE connected to the EPC or yung Evolved Packet Core. That is the core network. Next is the non-standalone 5G under release 15 and also under the release 15 SRIT enhancement. Release 15, uh, 5G siya, but saan siya? It is 5G, but on the BSS part. BSS part. 
the other two is the current 4G. So, so you know, ibig sabihin, but because of the dual connectivity, you can still be connected on these two and you can also get the throughput speed that you desire or that you are expecting on these two what cells kaya nga dual connected eh di ba more bandwidth you will get so that is option 3 so next probably we don't know option 2 di ba but this is for the future this is the final final configuration or the their plan or their strategy but still we will be experiencing these other options before we will before we will be going to the option 2 or the true 5G dadan pa po tayo dito dadan pa po tayo dito that's why uh, we call it way out in the future probably 2024 and onwards marami pang enhancements sa mga releases until we will reach release 18 and 19 because 2021 that will be for 5G okay so as you can see yung dating 4G naging next generation uh, e-node B na siya until such time as until such time even the core network became evolved naging 5G core na siya and yun ganun na papunta na sa sa deployment uh, strategy papunta sa option 2 okay so i hope uh, is it clear guys by the way is it clear before i'll uh, proceed is it clear po Mada, ma, ma, maintindihan niyo na pa niyo po ba yung yung migration ni telecom operator when it comes to to this uh, important uh, network elements na kahit hindi natin nakikita ito pala yung mga pangalan nila core network run and the bss side okay thank you so here Ito yun. 2019, may mga releases. Meron ding mga releases na na hold. Meron na, na, na ilabas, meron na hold due to some changes. Kaya it, it is not our control. It is the job of 3GPP if there are some, you know, subject for change. Subject for change. Okay? There will, there will be changes talaga. Whether we like it or not, there will be changes. But if you want to be updated with regards to the releases, uh, bisitain nyo po yung 3gpp.org, yung binigay ko na link. Mas maganda doon kasi pag... Because we, uh, for us, electronics engineers, we need to be updated, especially these releases. Kasi sa releases pa lang, malalaman mo kagad and you will be updated on what will be the, ano, the technologies or yung emerging top technologies that we will be experiencing. Ibig sabihin, mas, mas, ano ka, mas uh, ahead ka, hindi pa nilabas, alam mo kung ano yung ilalabas in the near future. Because you are already reading what is the, the standards that it is approved and it will be commercialized sooner or, or later by this manufacturers or big companies okay so ganun po yun ang ibig sabihin so napakahalaga uh, magbabasa-basa din po tayo okay that's that's also part of our uh, sabihin natin uh, parang matatawag ko na self directed learning ibig sabihin self directed learning you can also gain learning if you are going to read Ganun po, di ba? Okay. So, eto yung isang example. Yung ibig kong sabihin, if you will visit 3gpp.org, you will read kung ano yung nilalaman ng isang release. Merong version, merong date, kung, kung kailan ginawa yung, yung uh, release. What are the technical specifications? What are the, the technologies that this uh, release standard will offer us. So nakita nyo guys sa left side of the screen, release 15 ng ano, ng uh, 5G phase 1. Tapos meron, meron pwede na daw ang release 15 uh, 
uh, massive, uh, it is approved now, massive uh, IoT vehicle to everything. This is a standard, but, but, I'm talking about but, ang hindi natin alam, if ino-offer na ito ni operator sa commercial na side. So, that is the big difference. It, it doesn't mean na in-approve yung standard, nandiyan na kaagad binibigay ni ni operator sa atin as a service hindi baka medyo late sila they are they are slowly enhancing or, or they are upgrading so we need to wait we need to wait but in other countries yung tinatawag na 5G slice it is already operating ewan ko lang dito ewan ko lang dito sa Pilipinas but in other countries network slicing is already operating Marami na po silang mga companies na nag-avail ng network slice. So medyo huli, huli tayo, especially Pilipinas, but I hope dito sa loob ng 3GPP standard release na to, sana ito na din yung may experience natin na services dito sa Pilipinas. But I'm sure yung iba wala pa, especially sa industry side. Hopefully, hopefully may experience natin yan. Just for example, sa logistics, if you are working uh, sa LBC or sa Tugo or FedEx, they can, or this big company, uh, prominent, com- uh, I mean, uh, f- uh, famous company can request directly sa operator that we need a slice of your 5G. Ganon. Okay. So I hope, uh, hope I hope that uh, you will read because this is very useful for us, uh, even as uh, electronics engineers, that we need to be uh, also informed and to be educated na ganito pala ka-importante magbasa din tayo ng mga 3GPP releases kasi at least we will be informed and we will be, you know, uh, one step ahead. Uh, hindi pa nilabas ni, ni Smart, ni Globe, ni Dito. Eh, alam na natin po ano yung parating sana. Depende sa kanilang uh, in-improve sa kanilang network okay? and services by the way. So ito, kaya na sinabi ko, ito yung focus. So yung release 15, ang focus dito lang. But uh, as, as the uh, webinar progresses, mapapansin nyo na halos lahat ng focus areas na yung tatlo sa lahat, yung lahat na mismo ng, ng tatsulok ay importante. But for the release 15, the first release ng 5G, ang focus area po doon is yung ano? Ano yung focus area kanina? It, to, it is, or it was the EMBB. More on the bandwidth. Okay, so right now, ito yung mga release. Okay, so release 16 and release 16 uh, version uh, 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 other enhancements, other revisions kumbaga sa release 15 and sa 16. Okay? So makikita ko sa timeline. And of course, sa uh, release 16, it is still work in progress kasi syempre, uh, release 16, this is the ano, phase 2 phase 2 ng 5G. So it is a work in progress. Uh, hopefully, pag ma-approve ito, sana i-implement din ito ng ating local uh, what? Local uh, telecom operators. Okay? So, uh, later on, I will tell you anong ibig ko sabihin from, from the vision, tapos nung, nung nalaman ako anong mga visions, they write it as a plan, then plan, they are uh, making research, then research, they, they formulated and developed such standard, then standard going to commercialization. So, ganun po yung uh, process. Ipapakita ko po mamaya sa inyo po na ba- bakit ganun kaimportante na malaman natin kasi malaki yung naiambag nitong mga SDOs, especially si 3GPP. Okay? So, this is just still a work in progress. But hopefully, uh, sana in the years to come sana i-implement din itong approved standard release 
or ma-approve ma- ma- and it will go into commercial commercialization. Saan yung ma-approve ni or gagawin or implement ni telecom operator? Kasi bakit? Ano yung pinakamaganda dito? Eto guys, phase 3 ng vehicle to everything at saka ito. Eto yung pinakamaganda. Oh. Eto, kahit hindi ko nabanggitin yung iba na lahat sila importante pero kahit itong dalawa lang. Phase 2 na, tapos ano? Naging Industrial IoT Meron ng phase 3 na ng Vehicle to everything And so on and so forth And of course yung pinaka importante I, 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 lo- I love this uh, word Efficiency Okay So I hope you, it's clear And eto Release 16 Eto naman yung focus area Kaya sinabi ko kanina Na as 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 the time progresses, nag-evolve, nag-evolve, dahan-dahan yung technology natin, paisa-isa yung focus area until naging focus area niya is lahat. Lahat na ang naging focus area. So sa pre-16, ito yung focus area as per doon sa uh, 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 approved, hopefully approved na or pinapa-approved pa, pinapa-approve pa lang na standard which is really 16. So ito yung focus area. Diba? So, napapansin nyo, grabe pala. Kailangan, basahin ko yung sa 3GPP na website, magandang informasyon para Yes, it is, it is a good information, especially for us sa uh, electronics engineers. O, napala, napakalaking uh, uh, information talaga. Okay? So, again, here. So, going to 6G. So, meron ng release 17 and onwards, going to 6G. Tapos yung 6G papunta na sa release 80, 19, 20, and 21. Okay? So ito. Release 17. So ibig sabihin yung release 16, in-approve na pala. Lalo na lalo na ito. 17, approved September 2019. But as a standard, it doesn't mean na in-approve tapos gumagana na ito sa actual scenario. Wala pa. Wala pa. If this is a standard. But if you will read again, napakaraming enhancements so we are we are you know you know even ako uh, we are very much excited on what 5G will offer us ibig sabihin po meron tayong 5G ngayon pang consumer lang po yun na experience how much more kung i-introduce nila sa industry side so napakaraming enhancements diba guys napakarami tinan nyo tinan nyo pas uh, Sorry kung hin- sorry po pag kung hindi ko ma-zoom but if you will visit the 3GPP site you will read this one napakaraming enhancements guys tingnan niyo di ba even smart automation smart home it is already it can it can uh, i mean 5G can can power up smart home even automation even in the industry pwede even Wi-Fi can also complement and also can be an enabler for smart home, yung appliances natin. Pwede. Because Wi-Fi has a dedicated layer and dedicated frequencies on the non-cellular standards, even 5G. So they will not you know, interfere with each other, but they will complement with each other. So napakaganda. So yun. Uh, just read it guys I cannot I cannot discuss it uh, elaborately one by one kasi napakarami baka hindi natin baka kulang yung alauna <laughs> okay so just uh, visit 3GP, 3gpp.org and you will find it very interesting you will find it very interesting pala na magbasa dito sa mga releases okay so here now Kaya sinabi ko, release 17, it is now focused in all areas ng triangle. Tapos, as 5G is evolving, papunta sa 6G, nagiging focus na din yung gitna. Sir, parang nagbibiro ka yata, ano bang meron sa gitna? I will discuss it to you later, kung ano yung nasa gitna. Okay? Hindi lang EMBB, MMTC, URLCC, sino or ano ang meron sa gitna. 
I will discuss it to you later para ma-appreciate ninyo. Dahan-dahanin natin tingnan kung ano yung naging evolution okay? ng uh, mga releases at saka especially 5G going onwards to 6G. Okay? Dahan-dahanin natin para maintindihan natin ng maayos in a simpler way. Okay? So, ito. As per diagram, so very obvious and very, very uh, uh, prevalent na what is 5G in store for us is yung tatlo. If you will just look at this one, if you will just look at this one, halos parehas lang din yung presentation or representation ng triangle dito sa spider diagram. This is the spider spider diagram is more uh, detailed when it comes to the ano the approximate and estimated values. Kaya nga merong numerical val value eh, from 0 to 4 6 8 10. And 10 is the highest. Ano ba yung 10? So alam niyo na because it is a, a high highest numerical value and they assign a value of 10 as the highest, ibig sabihin, that is the value of what latency or how, how much reliability, how much peak data rate, so on and so forth, for representation or presentation purposes. Po. So, madaling maintindihan po ito. Hindi ibig sabihin na yan na yung, yung exact value. No. Gaya na sinabi ko, it is as what ITU said, and as what 3GPP said, it is a target target use case scenario. Ibig sabihin target, it can be higher or lower, pero not exact yung value. Okay? So, yan yung pinagkakaiba. Pag sinabing exact, kailangan yun yung ma-achieve natin. But no, according to ITU and 3GPP, ang ginamit nila na salita is target. So it can be, ano, gaya na sinabi ko, there will be subject to change na naman. So hindi natin pwede i-blame yung mga operators because they, they are, I know, uh, I know they are doing also their job to enhance the network further. Okay, let's just, you know, patiently wait and hopefully that our 5G network here Nationwide will be much more enhanced. Sana. Di ba? Okay? So here, outdated na yung iba na releases kasi na, na amend. Meron na mga amendments. Meron na mga revision. So outdated na siya. Dito na tayo mag-focus sa ano? Release 17. Okay? So ito, release 17. Tapos, napapansin nyo, Meron ng ginagawa na release 17 but for approval no oh, nasa baba yung kulay ano kulay uh, ma ma magenta ba yan or cyan okay so that's it di ba so ganun katindi yung tinatrabaho nitong mga SDOs or mga standardization organizations and of course sa 5G frequency selection is also very very crucial bakit as you can see here in this upper left corner, and if you still remember, guys, para ito sa lahat, not just the students, but for the professionals, if you remember the, the formula for the wavelength, so the higher the frequency, the shorter the range. So the, if bataas yung frequency na ginamit, of course, we are using a, a higher frequency as well. And for 5G, we are also using... Uh, uh, yung sub 6 gigahertz so that is the lower frequencies but for for the higher frequencies uh, that is what we call the millimeter wave frequencies so millimeter this mean naging lumiit lumiit masyado na yung wavelength if you know the wavelength of a sine wave in terms of the frequency versus time uh, uh, theory wavelength so, pag mataas yung frequency, liliit yung coverage. So, selection of frequencies, if you are a design engineer working on a project for 5G, frequency is very crucial. Okay? Very crucial talaga. And of course, anong frequencies pa? Are you going to use higher frequencies? 
or are you going to use the the narrow band or you're going to use the sub six uh, frequencies on your design because this frequency selection if you are a design engineer it is very important on your design because there are other locations that you you don't need to use or utilize higher frequencies kasi konti lang yung subscribers di ba so so bilang isang design engineer as well this is an important factor for creating your design okay frequency selection so para maintindihan naman eto yun kaya sinabi ko if you are a design engineer and also if you are uh, talking about sir baka mag interfere sila no they, they, they will not interfere because why in the first place we are selecting frequencies and frequencies are assigned per usage so hindi sila mag interfere with each other but now this one frequency selection for 5g it will create multiple ray layers for multiple needs bakit this is very important for designing 5g networks bakit if you are going to design for coverage purposes alam mo na and if you are going to design for capacity purposes alam mo nang gagawin mo and if you are going to design smaller networks or yung tinatawag na small cells for high throughput or high bandwidth in a smaller geographical area then alam mo nang gagawin mo tingnan mo lang sa sa slide na to tingnan niyo lang guys sa slide eto yung frequencies that you can use from the sub 6 until the millimeter wave or higher alam mo na kung ano yung usage alam mo na kung ano yung usage okay so is it clear guys by the way is it clear before i'll uh, continue is it clear okay is it clear po you can type yes or no in the chat box you can type in or the chat box okay okay thank you po so here ito yung ibig ko sabihin this is much more clearer this is much more clear guys to understand ito alam nyo na kung anong ibig sabihin why frequencies sa 5G at saka yung higher frequencies bakit importante okay bakit importante Ito po yung ibig sabihin. Coverage wise, capacity wise, high throughput wise. So napaka ito very simply simplified form on how you will understand and how how frequencies is, you know, uh, very important in your design, in selecting and also in operating. Di ba? Okay? So, ito. So, for 5G, it is composed mainly of two frequency range. The FR1, which is, this is the frequencies, and the FR2 for the higher frequencies, and it is in the millimeter wave na. So, makikita mo sa millimeter wave, 5G lang ang, magag ang, ang magagamit. 5G, and also 6G in the future. So ito yung kulay yung yung sa cyan yata ito cyan. Ito. So 5G lang yung makakagamit. The rest of the previous technologies. So sir may napansin ako. Merong ibang frequencies na nilagay sa 5G. Yes. You can use some frequencies of 3G and 4G going to 5G and that is what we call frequency refarming because why? Be in in the near future, I'm sure in the near future, pag 5G and going to 6G, mobile subscribers will drastically increase. So, pag dumadami yung mga subscribers, capacity will now play a very important role, not just the latency, but again, the, the capacity. So, pasok yung triangle. Pasok si URLC at saka si 
PM and PMBB, pasok na. Kasi habang tumatagal, tapos meron ng 6G, tapos meron ng 5G, 5, 5G sa industry, hindi lang sa society. So, time will come, capacity will be the second issue here. Kasi yung first issue is the latency. So, magkakaroon na naman tayo ng second problem. Ano sir? Ito, the bandwidth. So, now, if we're talking about bandwidth, that will fall under the capacity purpose. So, frequency refining, refining will be the very important thing that the operators will do so that capacity will not be an issue in 5G onwards. So, mapapansin nyo, 3G and 4G, merong frequencies po dyan na pwede natin i-reuse re sa 5G so that ma-achieve natin yung capacity. Okay? So, ganun po tayo mag-isip mga uh, electronics engineers. Okay? So, I hope it's clear. So, as per statistics po, marami na pong nag-i-invest for 5G. So it is very it is very prevalent. It is it is already you know it's already uh, the, the the actual scenario already shows you guys na marami talaga nag invest ng 5G. Yung iba nga nag invest ng satellite eh. So ganun ba sir? Anong anong klase ng satellite? Hindi po bisat meron pong isa yung tinatawag na NTN. I heard one article, but I'm not sure. I just heard and I, I read an article that there is a certain telecom operator that is starting to invest NTM networks. Okay. So, grabe. Grabe ang 5G. 5G will really be, or 5G is a promising technology. Mas lalo na si 6G later sa ating webinar. I-discuss ko, okay? So, South Korea. Grabe si South Korea. <clears throat> By the way, guys, if uh, I'm not sure if uh, updated si Wikipedia, but according to the article, si South Korea pala ang pinakaunang country nag-launch ng <coughs> excuse me, 5G. Tinan nyo, matindi. Sila yung pinakauna. And the plan, the, the plan should be 2020. So, Maaga silang nag-launch. So, very proud yung mga South Koreans. They are the ones who first, the first country who launched 5G. And it was successful. So, napaka-proud itong mga South Koreans in terms to 5G, okay? So, after a year, biglang nag-skyrocket as per statistics, yung investment at saka subscriber utilization ng 5G. 4.7 million 5G subscribers ka agad after a year prior to the launch. Grabe pala ang 5G no. no how, how much more dito sa sa ano? Sa ngayon, we, we are already experiencing 5G. Pero sa consumer side pa lang, hindi pa natin na experience sa industry which is very important. Sana ma-experience natin, di ba? So ganun. And of course, hindi na, hindi rin nagpapahuli, nagpapahuli si China. So by the end of January uh, 2019 siguro, eto, nag-invest tapos na-supersede ang 4G uh, statistics doon sa China. According to China Mobile, it's uh, an operator, one of the operators in China. And of course, Ito yung ibig ko sabihin. <coughs> Doon sa, tat sa tatsulok, yung tatlong uh, use cases, ito po ang pinaka-importante. And this is the simplified uh, form so that you will understand 5G use cases. Why should we just discuss the 5G use cases? Because this is what other countries, first world countries, are already experiencing. It is... Uh, it is a successful case and it is already been using and it is already been used okay so eto yon para may madali maintindihan uh, uh, this will be more interactive guys so EMBB 
high data rates. MMTC, yan yung color, high density. And the green will be for the latency. Okay, so I will be show you, showing to you guys in colors and also yung mga use cases from other countries. So for augmented reality, ito lang pala yung requirement. So ano yung requirement guys para interactive naman tayo? Ano yung, ano yung requirement? Ano yung requirement ni augmented reality? Ito yung kulay. So, okay guys, can you answer kahit na tsambahan lang? I hope you can answer correctly. So, for AR, ito yung requirement lang sa, yes, that's very good. Bandwidth and latency lang po for AR. Okay? And for the VR, it is also the same. So, ito yung mga use case requirements doon sa triangle na, na sinasabi ko kanina. And for the mixed reality, which is the combination of of uh, AR and VR, so ito na po ang tinatawag, mixed reality. And if you will combine those three, ang tawag na po noon is immersive reality or or uh, X reality. And that will be discussed on, on 6G later. So, ganun din. Mixed reality, ang kailangan is, ano, yung dalawang use case lang, requirement, yung latency at saka bandwidth. Okay, so extended reality, ito yung ibig ko sabihin. This will be for for, for uh, 6G onwards and also 5G, but it will be experienced more fully pag nandito na si 6G. Okay? It is an umbrella term for all immersive technologies. So, ganun katindi. Tapos yung requirement niya, ganun din. Latency and bandwidth. And for the AR games, I'm sure mahilig kayo sa Pokemon Go. Ito. Ito din yung requirement niya. Latency and bandwidth. For the monitoring and surveillance, this is very good. This is a very good application for our security, for governance. Ito. Kailangan din latency and bandwidth. But for the FWA, that uh, 5G can uh, you, you can you can use this this type of uh, infrastructure in 5G, especially if there are areas na na merong ibang mga komunidad or merong ibang mga tao na takot maglagay ng napakalaking tore, may tore na nakatayo sa 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 division nila, natatakot or yung iba nagrereklamo na ayaw namin magpalagay ng ganito. So, you can have an option to install yung tinatawag na FWA. Okay? So, yan po yung FWA or yung Fixed Wireless Network. And ano yung requirement niya? Massive connectivity at saka yung ano pa? Ano guys? Yung bandwidth. di ba? So, yung latency ah uh, Magiging issue siya pero wala tayong magagawa kasi wireless yung connectivity. Kasi malayo daw yung cell, cell site tapos ayaw, sila, ayaw nilang magpatayo ng napakalaking tower kasi takot sa radiation siguro. Ganon, which is not true. So pwede sila mag-extend and they can install uh, FWAs. Okay? So parang ganito yan, guys. Parang ganito. Okay? Okay, just like that. So pwede ilagay sa taas ng isang interested na uh, building owner. Okay? And for the vehicle to everything or yung V2X, meron pa siyang kasamang uh, inside the vehicle infotainment or yung tinatawag na information entertainment. Ano yung uh, kailangan niya na use case requirement? Yung ano lang, ban with connected devices, di ba? So, napaka daming applications pala, even in the industry, itong si 5G, which is itong uh, sa, sa mga ganitong businesses, sa vehicle to everything, even for the logistics, ganito katindi ang 5G pala. Okay? If you want private, if you want hanggang private LTE lang, it's, it's up to you. If you are the owner of a logistics uh, uh, company, but it's better if you have your own, uh, if you have your also your own 5G uh, slice 
or if you want ha- or kung contento lang kayo hanggang private LTE so it's up to you but uh, 5G it's a different thing so if 5G for logistics lalong lalo na yung mga mga big companies like like Alibaba they are already Okay, hello po. Oh, it seems like na disconnect po ang ating speaker. Hello, Sir Sajid. Oh, hello po, Sir. Yeah, na-disconnect yata si Sir Sajid. Oh, po na oh si let's sir. wait for a while. Ano? So, while we're waiting po, uh, so let's try to uh, ask the opinions po ng ating uh, mga tagapakinig ngayon. So, what do they think of the webinar so far? So, Ms. Jeline. So, ikaw muna, Carl. Ano muna yung matatakeaway mo ngayon? Hanggang, hanggang saan yung nalaman mo about sa uh, webinar natin today? So, I think our speaker focused talaga no, technically on discussing the 5G network because mm-hmm. I think the 5G network really plays an important role for the modern telecommunication system natin ngayon. Especially yung sa binanggit niya about sa UR, LLC, EMBB, and MMTC. So what I find fascinating about it is the low latency and high density communication. No? Mm-hmm. Yung, lalo yung about sa self-driving cars. I think that's pretty awesome. Ano? Yung sinasabi niya na wireless local area uh, network na kung saan hindi mo na kailangan ng wires in terms of local area network communication. And I think yung vital part talaga ng webinar natin ngayon na talagang ini-emphasis niya is to keep everybody updated, to read and to educate ourselves, especially as an ECE student pa lang tayo, no? na maging equipped tayo sa trends uh, in terms of the pressing demands ng society natin kasi ang taas talaga ng requirement when it comes to, you know, yung mga big data at yung industry natin ngayon, no? So, how about ikaw, Jelly? Anong tingin mo sa mm, webinar so, natin ngayon? Ito yung last part na sinabi kanina ni Engineer Sajid na sa 5G, for, para sa lahat na. So, nandun yung ano, speed, yung throughput, connection, density, latency, and delay. So, hindi lang siya para sa tao, hindi lang siya para sa consumer, pero hindi na para sa industry. So, katulad ng South Korea, one amazing factor nun is na nalang siya ng December 2018. Pero, sabi kanina ni Engineer Sajid na na-release na, officially release ang 5G last 2019. So, gano'ng ka-advance din yung South Korea na before pa officially ma-launch ang 5G, nakapag-release na agad sila ng 5G connections. So, true yun partner, Tapos, no? Tapos, oh, okay, sige. Oh. Tapos, so consider pa natin na uh, with 5G uh, it is the uh, internet of everything na na kung saan na nito na yung virtual reality AR and other applications na maari natin ma-apply in the future pa di ba partner yes partner nakakatuwa nga no imagine yung sinasabi niya although it's not realistic so imagine 10 gigabytes per second di ba mm-hmm. <laughs> kung maabot natin yon so how fast is that so, kasi nga, kanina lang, nag-try ako mag, uh, sabi niya, mag-test ng internet yes. speed. Mm-hmm. Tinry ko sa akin kasi, di ba nasira yung aking uh, modem last week? So, pinaayos namin siya sa PLDT. And then, sinabi sa akin nung uh, technician na, yung dumadaloy daw na internet sa amin is 5G na. And then, sabi ko, how is that possible? And then, ang ginawa ko, nag-internet speed ako and umabot ako ng 288 mbps for download speed and 175 mbps for upload 
Kaya talagang na-overwhelm ako noon. Kasi yung unang, yung initial ano ko, test speed ko nasa around 70 and then 74 yung mm-hmm. latency niya. So talagang na-overwhelm ako, napakabilis. So ayun. Ikaw partner, na-experience mo na ba yung 5G? Uh, yung sa, uh, currently, yung internet din namin is in fiber na din. So ang connectivity niya is naka na rin. Oh. And di ba ngayon, most of the time, ang um, smartphones na is in 5G connections na din. Oy. Di ba? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Napakaganda, uh, no? <laughs> Ang bilis. Uh, how about kaya yung mga ano natin, yung mga ating nasa chat box ngayon, ano? Baka pwede nyo pong i-type. Sino po ba dito yung nakagamit na ng 5G? What do you think about it? Ano pong opinion nyo? Ganun ba ba siya kabilis sa lugar ninyo? Kasi di ba sabi ni sir, yung iba nagre-reglamo kasi nga, yung iba na mabagal. <laughs> Kasi yung nakita ko sa video last time, yung sa huling webinar na inatinda natin, nasa around 1 GB per second siya. And to think na cellphone lang yung gamit niya, di ba sobrang bilis nun compared dun sa connection ko ngayon. So how about po sa ating okay, participants today? So kindly. Oh, so yun po pala. Mm, okay so po, it's not okay. 5G, 5 gigahertz. Ah, yun po pala. So thank you so much for for the additional information. Thank you Sir Gian po for the Thank you po Sir Gian. So 5 gigahertz pala, hindi pala 5G. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah. Ayun pala. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, parang nandito na po yata ulit ang ating resource speaker. Uh, hello po, sir. Nandiyan na po ba kaya, sir? Okay, yes. So, while I'm waiting for my other PC, so, uh, can you hear me loud and clear? Uh, a little a little low lang, sir. Pa, pa-increase lang po yung, ano niyo, sir, yung volume po. Uh, okay, so here, uh, may heard clearly na po? So, yes, sir. Loud and clear po. Uh, okay, so... For LTE, gaya ng uh, sinabi ko, so 5G can also help us in our, you know, sa logistics area. And next will be this one or the vehicle to everything. So for the vehicle to everything, yung tatlong use case na po yung pinaka-importante. Kasi, uh, as you all know, uh, this is already operating not just uh, indoors, like sa parking lots, or even uh, outside the parking building. So, eto, it is, you know, it needs those three uh, distinct use case kasi it really needs all the the requirements needed like the bandwidth, the massive connected uh, devices, and even the latency. So, napaka-importante po. Okay. And next is this uh, cellular concept, and which is the vehicle to everything. So, as you can see that uh, 4G and 5G are, you know, in harmony with regards to the connectivity and the resources okay and of course pag sinabing vehicle to everything ito po yung tinatawag na uh, platooning yung one of the autonomous driving which is part of what release yung release 17 na sinabi ko kanina di ba so platooning so the only important thing for platooning is the ano yung kulay na to, yung latency lang importante because kailangan walang delay kasi kung hindi eh baka delay yung command imbis na uh, liliko or uh, it needs to stop in a certain na uh, uh, crossing baka pag nagkaroon ng delay sa connection baka ito pa yung ano yung rason na merong mga miscalculations and it will also result into an accident. So, ganun ka-importante yung latency para dito sa platooning. So, this is under release 17, di ba? Okay. So, yun. Autonomous driving. So, ito po yung pinaka uh, simpler na uh, presentation on 
on the platooning. So as you can see, hindi po lahat merong driver. Merong isa pong ano, uh, lead lead po, lead driver and the rest will follow. So as long as it's a uh, uh, powered by uh, uh, you know uh, 5G. So hopefully this will this will become a reality especially sa industry side. Okay? And of course, malapit na po tayo mag-break, yung official break. Uh, hindi pa ito yung totoong break <laughs> kanina. And ito po yung mga summary for the 5G. So we will be continuing 6G after the break. And uh, ito po, uh, summary use cases. So here for 5G, ito po yung summary niya. So one of it is yung drastic increase of the bandwidth requirement. Yun po yung isa sa mga uh, use case na which is very very important for us especially not just the users but for the applications. So syempre papasok na dito pag sinabing applications, user experience and sa industry applications. Yun po yung ibig sabihin nun. And of course, yung second and uh, third yung massive uh, connectivity or yung massive IoT and of course yung ultra reliable low latency communications or yung latency itself so ganun as the time progresses as the generation is progressing or evolving napapansin mo na before it is more on human to human na uh, connectivity hanggang sa naging human to machine which is IoT and Meron din sinasabi na machine to machine which is which is already slowly uh, showing us this machine to machine connectivity mas lalo na pag na introduce na yung 6G. So yan ganun ka importante guys ang daming applications sa industriya that 5G can give us, okay? So with that and this is our coffee break and meron pa akong video while we are making our coffee break uh, this will be a 10 minute uh, break so that ma-refresh naman tayo so that we can uh, review what we discussed in 5G and we will continue to 6G after this 10 minute break po okay so sit back and relax uh, enjoy the video as well okay thank you My name is Phil Siviter. Nokia's CEO for the UK and Ireland. Nokia is one of the world's leading providers of telecoms technology, working with service providers across the world to deliver mission critical networks for their customers. We can't underestimate the game-changing nature of 5G. The innovation that 5G is going to allow is a, in a whole range of technologies. Technologies like IoT, private wireless, sensors, and they're using sensors to gather huge, huge amounts of data to allow businesses and industries to go through huge amounts of digital transformation. In verticals like manufacturing, in healthcare, in logistics, and while we might think about this in terms of large corporations and large campuses, this is just as relevant for small businesses and SMEs in how they will consume 5G and drive innovation through their business. There's two key areas that 5G is able to drive huge improvements. One is in bandwidth, so huge amounts of capacity and improved connectivity. And the second is in latency. A good analogy would be when you as a child were trying to drive your remote control vehicle, when actually you'd get it to turn left and right, often there'd be a bit of a delay and perhaps you wouldn't have complete control over the vehicle. What 5G does if we scale that up into an environment of autonomous vehicles, it gives you complete control to sub milliseconds. It provides huge amounts of improved control. And then when we think about control, we think about health and safety and operating these mission-critical environments. 
This is the fundamental difference that 5G brings. When we think about how industries have transformed over the last decade or so, we've all seen how we've moved to online banking, online shopping, consuming of online streaming videos, industries such as manufacturing and healthcare. And it's these industries that are gonna be transformed by 5G. These innovations are just as relevant for small businesses who can use 5G and the technologies enabled by 5G to fundamentally transform the way they deliver service. One example I really like is in the agriculture environment, where they're using 5G with drones to assess how the crops are doing across the estate and then targeting the actions required to ensure that those crops are delivered as required and in delivering maybe increased drainage or more water in the area when it's needed. We can consider the fourth industrial revolution to be the automation of everything. This automation of physical industries and new verticals will usher in a new era of productivity underpinned by technologies such as 5G. A private wireless network is a standalone secure network delivering ubiquitous connectivity using radio spectrum. When we think about delivering connectivity quickly and perhaps for a short period, we think of maybe a pop-up. And when we think about pop-up connectivity, private wireless is perfect. Nokia and BT are working very closely together to bring 5G to industry to enable the next generation of technologies powered by 5G for the benefit of the physical industries and the transformation they are going on over the coming years.
Okay po. Well, habang hihintay po natin si Injur na Sajid, Sajid na i-connect yung other device niya, reminder lang po ulit na ang ating webinar link or ating at attendance form or evaluation form ay may propose po after ng webinar proper po. Also, pwede po kayo mag-stream sa ating YouTube channel na ISAP National kung hindi po tayo makakonect here sa Zoom. Also po sa participants or the attendees, uh, reminder lang din po na wala po kayo na uh, other functions ng Zoom. Wala po kayo nung video and mic buttons po. Only the Q&A and chat box po lang ang allowed sa inyo. Yun lang po. Thank you. So later din po, we will have a Q&A portion again. So we will remind everyone that you are only allowed to post questions in Q&A box mechanism on the online meeting software po. And not on the chat box kasi we will only acknowledge questions in on the Q&A box po. I think nandito na po ulit si Engineer Sajid. So, we will remind again po everyone that the second session of the event will start in a few minutes. So, brace yourselves to know more about the future with six generation networks and how it will impact our daily lives. Again, uh, pwede allowed po lahat na mag-ask ano, mag na question in our Q&A box and also in the chat box po. Correction po kanina, pwede po sa chat box and the Q&A box, pwede po tayo mag-ask na questions. Yes, sir. Okay lang po. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay po, galing kay Sir Danlex Kaguran. Pas, pwede pa send po link. Thanks, uh, Sir. Uh, remind lang po namin. So, ang link po ng attendance natin is mang manggagaling after the webinar proper po. So, yun po.
question po from Ma'am Christine. Will you provide insert? Yes, ma'am. We will provide insert po as long as na na acquire nyo po yung requirements po natin para makakuha ng e-certificate na tiniscuss po natin earlier before we start our program. Okay. So, buddy, Jeline, ayan, medyo tahimik tayo, no? Let's add a quick spice to our event, no? Okay, sige. I think Sanjay na yata si Engineer Sanjay. Diyan na ba si Sir? Ay, diyan na pala si Sir. Okay po. Uh, hello po, sir. Uh, you can call it, sir, whenever you're ready po. Okay, so sorry for the... Uh, Sorry for the inconvenience kanina, but uh, that was a successful break. So I hope na, uh, how do we call this one? I hope that uh, you were, you know, well informed dun sa 5G. So now we will go back to, or continue, shall, uh, I should say, sa 6G. So you saw, guys, the advancements for... Uh, 5G and for 6G yun po yung hopefully na mangyayari in the near future as you can see on the video courtesy of University of Helsinki uh, by Finland 6G alliance po yun and uh, that was very you know very very promising so right now we will continue to the 6G na part okay so that was the video Okay, so right now, we will be discussing on 5G itself. I mean, sorry, uh, 6G. So as you can see, ito po, as per uh, review din, 5G, tapos ako tayo, and now we are in 6G. Okay, so... Uh, you will see that uh, starting from 6G, uh, it should be uh, release 18 and onwards. So I hope very promising yung mga nilalaman ng uh, releases na yan because uh, for right now, release 18 pa po yung, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, just try to uh, visit 3gpp.org and I think uh, yung releases after release 18, parang ginagawa pa yata. But hopefully, if pero na, uh, pwede natin basahin. And we will see what will be the uh, enhancements that 6G will offer to us. But right now, wala pa pong 6G. So hanggang basa lang po tayo ng mga standards na ginagawa pa lang nila. But not yet approved, okay? So now, kaya na sinabi ko, ang madalas na gagamitin ko dito sa second part ng webinar is yung keyword na vision. Because yung vision, uh, without vision, wala po tayong ma-lay ma down na mga plano. That's the very uh, important requirement on how a vision will be realized. Kailangan, we will put it into a plan. But syempre, uh, hindi tayo makakaroon ng plano pag wala tayong vision. Uh, that is also similar, uh, I'm sure you are very, you know, you are very familiar doon sa sinasabi parati ng ating company, mga respective companies natin. Kung saan po tayo nagtatrabaho, ang madalas natin nakikita, mission, vision, at saka, uh, ano pa, mission, vision, at saka goals ng inyong kumpanya kung ke, kung saan kayo nagtatrabaho di ba tama so uh, i hope you agree kaya nga may nakalagay sa kada company may nakalagay na vision yan yung 
very, very much similar na, na term sa keyword na ginamit ko, which is vision. Uh, this is the vision of your company. This is the mission. So, halos kasing tulad po ng sinabi dito sa ayon kay 3GPP, they have their vision. So, once the vision has been been agreed, then they will put it into a plan and they will make some necessary, you know, paperwork so that a standard will be formulated and hopefully it will be approved, then it can be, uh, you know, subject for implementation na po. So, yun po yung ibig sabihin dito sa 6G. Kagaya nito, napakataling intindihin. So, noon, Nung hinihintay natin si 5G, ganun din yung ginagawa. Ano yung unang ginagawa? Research. So, when 5G was already launched, simultaneously, in parallel, working in the backgrounds, naggagawa na din sila ng research. So, ganun katindi ang ginagawa ng mga ng 3GPP, by the way, ITUR, and even the other uh, Uh, not affiliated but uh, uh, contributors isa sa mga contributors which is universities uh, research organizations and also again 3GPP and, and also dito sa 6G na part sa aking webinar many contributors na po ang nagko-contribute kasi ano pa eh they, they want to contribute this one for 6G network in the future because Possibly, pag okay yung si 3GPP, they will include one of the many contributions doon sa mga sinasabi ko na contributor. So, as you can see guys sa uh, uh, slide, prior to the launch, nagre-research na din sila at the same time ng 6G. So, ganun katin din yung ginagawa nila na hindi natin alam. So, meron din ibang technologies that didn't make it to 5G, kagaya nung pinakita ko sa sa first part ng webinar. Kasi, uh, hindi lahat ng standards ay approved by the body. Ibig sabihin, hindi po isang tao ang nag-approve. It is a governing body, ITU, and also some partners, partners partnerships. Yung mga partners doon sa sinabi ko sa 3GPP. Marami po sila, mga brilliant minds, mga engineers din, mga researchers that uh, merong ibang technologies or merong ibang mga enhancements that was not or were not approved hanggang sa nilabas na yung 5G. So, this is also similar on what they are doing dito sa 6G. So, syempre, pinakauna, research. Then what? Yung sinabi ko, vision. That will be our main keyword all throughout part 2 of the webinar, vision. Then, when the vision has been agreed, plans have been made, and there are now requirements needed to standardize, to make standards for 6G, okay? Then after that, of course, evaluation, trials, testings, and then, pag na-approve na, the ITO, commercialization na ang susunod niyan, okay? So, is it clear, guys? Is it clear? At least alam nyo kung ano yung yung proseso na ginagawa nila na hindi natin alam. Is it clear, guys? You can type in the chat box. Okay, very good. Thank you. So now, same pa rin. It is still who? ITU. And it is still who? Which, guys? 3GPP pa rin. For 6G, yung ating SDO. So sila pa rin. Sila pa rin. Okay? But now, ano yung napansin nyo? Ano yung uh, pinakaiba? So, ang pinakaiba dito is yung, sabi ko kanina sa chart, ITU name. Now, 6G standards will be named as uh, 6G uh, for the market name and for the ITU name, technical name will be IMT 23, 2030 because that is the target plan. It is a 10-year plan, and that is the target year, 2030, that hoping the vision of 6G will be realized sooner or later. So, ilan na? We still have 8 years to go. Sana <laughs> baabutan pa natin, guys. Diba? Especially kayo, the younger generation. Okay? 
So here, eto, napaka-importante chart na naman. But there are other informations that we don't know. Of course, it is very obvious. Bakit natin masasabi na we don't know? Of course, we, think we are still on the research and standardization phase. Wala pang hardware. So wala pang pangalan. Di ba? Wala pa pangalan ba? Pa possibly. Possibly, wala nang run. Possibly, core network la lang. Tapos, ito yung system name. So, you see, we still don't know. But, there are already contributors contributing such research na ginawa nila for 6G. Okay, so at least, malinaw sa inyo. 6G, of course, marketing name, 6G na yan. Sigurado na yan. Kasi, uh, syempre, kaya noon, nung wala pang 5G, nung lumabas yung 5G, naging trending. Number one trending because that is the parang naging uh, basic uh, commodity na yung 5G, yung telecommunication services, naging prime commodity na. So, ganun yun. Uh, sure na sure na yan, 6G ang market name, but for the rest of the network infrastructure, we don't know. Okay, so we will wait for that. Okay, guys? So here. Now, gaya na sinabi ko, dahil this is this part of the discussion, more on the visions, but hopefully, hopefully, sana magiging totoo ito na ito, no, ito yung i-implement ni ito ni vendor, ito ni vendor, si Huawei, si ganito, si ganyan, si ganito. Sana yung contributions nila it will be accepted and it will be also included in the standardization phase sana. So now, puro visions tayo. Okay, but it doesn't mean a visions, hindi totoo. They are making research and development. Itong sino? Just like this company. Very familiar itong company sa inyo, guys. Huawei. Now, this is very promising and very interesting, guys. Ano ba yung nakikita nyo sa screen? Di ba nandoon yung triangle, yung tatsulok? Now, ang vision ni Huawei is they improve the 5G target use case requirements, yung triangle. Ano yung dinagdag niya? Yung polygon, which is a triangle, which is also uh, a kind of polygon, naging evolve na. Evolve. What did you see? What? Did you see in the screen? So, three sides, naging maraming sides. N sides. N sides na ang tawag. N sides. Diba? N sides. So, now we will discuss one by one, ano ba yung vision na i-contribute ni Huawei for 6G? So, dito pa lang si Huawei. Grabe na. Ang kinocontribute na niya, yung vision daw nila is 5.5G. How much more yung 6G? hindi pa nila baso. Ito yon for Huawei company, Huawei Technologies in mainline, mainland China, their vision is to what? Enhance further. Kagaya nito, ito, from 5G, they want to enhance more. Ano yung gusto nilang enhance? Look at the slide, guys. Real-time broadcast, uh, broadband communication. So, matindi. So, ibig sabihin, it is more enhanced Sa ano na side? Dito sa side sa EMBB and sa URLLC na side. So they added, according to their vision, an enhanced addition sa existing 5G. This is their vision. Okay, vision guys. Real-time broadband communications. Ano yung meron dito? XR Pro. So immersive reality pro. Meron pang pro. So, ganun katindi si Huawei ang contribution niya. XR Pro. Okay, ganun katindi. So, I hope we will be experiencing this one in 6G. So, next will be ano pa? Under dito sa MMPC at saka URLLC, ang dinagdag according to the vision of Huawei company, yung HCS, Harmonized Communication and Sensing. So, mga sensory networks are already enhanced, especially sa positioning and vehicle to everything. So, ganun katindi. Next will be 
according to their vision again, UCBC, uplink, centric, broadband communications. Ano pa yung meron dito? Yung sa mga machine connected device, more on machine vision, and yung pag-upload ng high definition videos, for example, is very, very much faster na. Kasi, mapapansin nyo guys, ito, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you one example. Dito pa lang sa 5G, itry nyo mag-download speed at saka upload speed. Ano yung napapansin nyo? It is not symmetrical. Sir, hindi ko maintindihan. Ano ibig mo symmetrical? Ibig sabihin, symmetrical, the download speed and the out upload speed must be or almost the same value. Pag sinabing, pag sinabing uh, for example, uh, let's just say 500 Mbps. So if we will say symmetrical or symmetric, dapat 500 din yung upload. Why? Kasi yung uploading uploading is also very, very, very important. Yeah, bakit? Importante sa office. If you want to upload something and your office is connected to 5G pero hindi symmetrical, ito yung maiko-contribute ni Huawei to enhance further the existing 5G. Yung tinatawag na UOCBC magiging symmetrical na yan so that machines can machines can uh, I mean machine vision can be implemented sana because this is their vision and also yung uploading of high definition videos kasi hindi kasi symmetrical eh uh, guys if you know about Gpon Ppon and Pon in the fiber networks meron po yung ano option na asymmetrical or symmetrical okay kung symmetrical halos parehas din sa sinasabi ko na yung sa fiber networks if symmetrical po yung ano yung inimplement ni ni ano ni operator yung upload at saka, at saka download halos parehas yung value so this is almost the same dito sa wireless networks this is according to the vision of Huawei. Okay? So I hope it is clear, guys. Next, eto. Sa mga nasa, mga kababayan natin, mga electronics engineers na nasa Japan, this is their operator, NPT. Okay? Uh, I think it's Nippon Telegraph and tele, Telephone Networks, yung full name ng operator nila doon, yung NPT. So ito yung, Vision naman for 6G ni NTT Docomo. Iba naman yung kanilang i-contribute na research and development. Ito yun, ano? Many use cases in all existing 5G use case requirements. Ang tawag nila, extreme requirement for specific use cases. Sir, sir medyo nalilito ako. Ba't ang dami? Halos lahat ng sites merong specific na something. It is possible, in, in, in my opinion, in my technical opinion, it is possible that ang vision ni NTT of Japan ay nakatutok sa industriya. Maybe this is this term na ibig niya sabihin is extreme requirement for specific, specific use case. Maybe they are focusing on the what, network slicing na technology. Kasi meron yan si 5G. Baka ganito. So napaka-promising ang kada vision nitong mga contributors. ba? So napakaganda. Very promising ang 6G. Hopefully, we will experience what 6G can offer us in the future. And hopefully, one of the many contributions will be, will be included in the standard in the release. Okay? Do you agree guys? So Okay, let's proceed. Eto, according naman to ITO, so meron din silang uh, group, which is FG Net 2030. Their vision is more upscale. More upscale. Kasi sa graph, uh, as you can see, it is upscaling. Ibig sabihin, etong before or before until now, which is eto, as you can see guys, eto, 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 eto. color blue, sky blue. Eto yung current 5G. And 
yung vision ni 5G, of course, ito, ito, target use cases. But for 2030, year 2030 and onwards, which is the plan of 6G to be commercialized, ito yung vision ni ITU. As you can see, meron na naman tinagtag, sir. Very, very, very interesting to. Ano kaya answer? Let's see. According to their vision, ito. According to the vision of ITU under FGNet 2030, ito ang dinagdag niya. Ito yung dinagdag niya, guys. According to the vision of ITU, pina-enhance niya further yung nasa triangle. And now, they call it what? VLV, TIC, Many Nets, and BP and HPC. So, isa-isay natin. So, VLV, it's called Very Large Volume and Tiny Instant Communication. So, Tiny Instant Communication. Ibig sabihin, if we will look into the whole picture, if we will look to this perspective na maraming uh, gustong mag-avail ng service ng uh, X-reality or yung immersive reality, according to the vision of ITU, pwedeng-pwede pa si bakit? Ano yung may bibigay nitong VLV at saka TIC? Ito, beyond ARVR, which is, i-discuss natin, yung uh, immersive reality, hologram or holograph, holographic type communications, and very high throughput, ibig sabihin, kung 1 Gbps is yung target EMBB ni 5G, ano si 6G? Target niya is 1 terabit per second or higher. So, ganun katindi. Tapos, yung teleport uh, latency niya for the hologram or the, or the, or the holographic uh, 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 capability dapat less than 5 milliseconds. So, ibig sabihin, dapat sa 5G pa lang, along with 6G vision, the requirement should be maintained ang 1 millisecond latency. But, they enhance further. So for the holographic teleportation, sabi nila, their vision dapat maintained one, uh, less than 5 milliseconds para very clear yung hologram. So ibig sabihin, dati uh, video chat tayo, baka sa sunod, hologram tayo pre sa ating uh, webinar. So uh, napakaganda, di ba? So very, very promising talaga ang 6G. Particularly, di ba? So, next, digital senses. So, matindi yung vision ni ITU. Digital senses. Paano kaya yon? So, how many senses does our body have? Di ba marami? So, they will convert our sen senses in digital form so that it can travel in our media. Di ba? Media. We are talking about media because we are talking about telecommunications. Telecommuting, that's one example. So, napakaganda. Digital sen senses, how can we, uh, how can we uh, translate, correlate our senses and convert it into digital form so that the receiver can understand ano yung pinapadala natin na senses. So, napakatindi no vision ni ITU, di ba? <laughs> very, very promising and interesting para sa atin sa hindi pa nakakalam. And of course, next, many nets. Eto na, many nets. Many nets, satellite networks. Okay, guys, ano yung unang yung, ano yung unang pumapasok sa isipan nyo? Di ba ito? Di ba ito? Hubs, NTN, sino pa? Sino pa? Starlink, OneLink, sino pa? O, di ba? Ah, napakarami. Many nets. So that magiging maintain yung 1 millisecond na sabi ni 5G until 6G. So ganun. Tapos MEC. Okay, uh, before MEC, uh, internet scale, private network. Ibig sabihin, internet scale. Many ISPs. 
can join the network, even private networks, so that it can have many networks and many devices can connect in these various networks. So, ganun ang ibig sabihin niya. Tapos itong MEC, Mobile Edge Computing. Ano yung pinakamaganda nitong Mobile Edge Computing from 5G and also it can be applicable to 6G? Ano? Many clouds can be introduced. Kung maraming clouds, it can also maintain and reduce the latency until 6G. Kahit maraming users connected. So, ganun ang vision ni ITU. Kaya, yun lang ibig ko sabihin noong, noong first part or even the, the start of my webinar, for me, latency talaga is the biggest issue in 5G. Lalo na sa 6G. Okay, guys? And for the BB and HPC, this is more on the massive connectivity. Okay? Bakit? Without uh, many connected devices that can be catered, useless yung 5G. Lalo na si 6G. Kaya nga tawag nito is, ano guys? MMTC. Or yung tinatawag natin na massive IoT. Massive IoT, guys. Okay, so here, according to its vision of ITU, ano yung, ano yung napapansin nyo na keyword? Di ba napapansin nyo is, ano? Ano yung ginamit na term sa vision ni ITU? Di ba ito? Guarantee. Ibig sabihin, sigurado. Sigurado maraming connected daw. Latency, it's guaranteed okay, throughput, lossless, user network interfaces, and ano pa, precise or yung precision. So ganun katindi yung vision ni ITU pala. Very much promising and interesting by guys. Ba? Next, ito. <clears throat> Because of the introduction of the visions of these many contributors just like ITU and Huawei, Marami ng bagong verticals na maiintroduce sa society. So it can also generate new technological advances, new technological jobs available for us in the future. Sana. Okay? So ito yung tinatawag na new verticals in the society. And for the governance or the government, federated because new infrastructures can also be placed. And for the networks, for the public, and for the private, they call it, as per their vision, next wave of innovations in the network. Okay, so at least clear. Is it clear, guys, before I'll proceed? Proceed para, before tayo proceed sa mga ibang contributors, sa mga vision, is it clear, guys? Hindi ba mahirap? Okay, thank you. So, next. Ito. Sigurado ako, alam na alam nito. Without this company, Samsung, wala pong mailalabas na ano, smartphone. Do you remember, guys? Galaxy S. Do you remember Galaxy S? According to them, hindi po ako, according to them, because of Samsung, nung nilabas niya yung first smartphone, which is Galaxy S, doon na po nag-umpisa na yung iba, gumagawa ng mga smartphones, mga touch, uh, touch screen smartphones. Di ba? So, Samsung, I'm sure very familiar sa inyo. So, ito naman si Samsung, iba naman yung approach niya. Iba naman yung vision niya, yung approach. Yung discarte niya, according to its vision ni Samsung, nakafocus sila sa mga appliances. Appliance. So you can see, smartphones, 2010, buhay na buhay pa rin si Samsung. 2020, meron ng wearables, appliances, consumer, electronics, and eto 2030 na hindi pa natin alam because it is still a vision. Hopefully, ma-experience natin. Ito, 2030. Diba? 
So, looks promising talaga itong 6G. According to the vision of Samsung, ha? Okay, next. Ito naman. It's, it is another organization. They, they call it ETRI. And ito naman yung kanyang uh, ETR, ETRI of uh, South Korea, by the way. So, ito naman yung kanyang may co-contribute. It's part of their research and development. And according to them, ito yung sa kanila naman. Ano naman yung napapansin nyo, guys? Ano yung uh, keyword na ginamit nila? Di ba ito? Ultra. <laughs> so, if si uh, ITU gumamit ng extreme or even si NTT of Japan gumamit ng extreme, ETRI gumamit siya ng according to its vision, vision nila, mga elements and scenarios and the keyword the ultra. So napakaganda, ultra lahat, ultra broadband, ultra large coverage, ultra massive connectivity, ultra low energy which is very important so that our wearables daw or our existing wearables or hopefully in 6G, yung mga wearables ng 6G will consume less power. Okay, and of course, yung high precision, hindi mawawala yan. It should be, you know, very precise in 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 uh, the massive connectivity because pag maraming madidisconnect, parang hindi maganda pa rin yung 6G, di, di ba? So, ito yung kanilang vision, napakaganda. Usage elements and scenarios. So, from 5G, as you can see on the, on the right side, ito yung vision nila. To enhance further, according to ETRI of South Korea, they want this one, according to their vision, to enhance further yung nasa kanan, yung si 5G. So, ganun kaganda pala. So, you see how, how many brilliant minds <clears throat> contributing such innovations, such enhancements para lang sa atin sa society. And of course, <clears throat> para din sa yung SDG ni United Nations yung ano yun? Sustainable Development Goals. Okay. So ito. <clears throat> ito naman. According to ATRI, they created a chart. So, elements versus use cases. So ito yung mga parameters. Broadband, ultra precision, ultra uh, uh, connected uh, machines, mobility, coverage, energy. So, <clears throat> meron siyang kanya-kanyang mga ano, mga specialized uh, areas lang. Hindi lahat covered niya. So, if we're talking about a use case for sports broadcasting, ito yung meron siya. As long as the others, ito lang din yung Meron siya. So, for example, for live sports, concerts, and broadcasting, ano lang yung meron ni sa kanya? Ano yung meron ni sa kanya? Ang mer ang pwede niya, ang mga elements or parameters na, na, na kinakailangan para sa ganitong use case, just like live sports and concert broadcasting, is the, ano, kailangan daw niya is ultra broadband, ultra precision, or high precision, ultra massive connectivity, and energy, which is kailangan low-powered. Kasi, you, if you're talking about broadcasting and sports, it will it will consume many hours, di ba? For, for their live stream. So, sa, sa mga devices naman, mga hardwares, we need a low-power consumption. So, kaya sinabi niya dito, ultra-energy or ultra-low-power consumption. So for the other use cases like for the hologram, uh, according to the vision, for their vision, perceptual illusion, in-flight broadband internet. So dati, sabi ng flight attendant, you need to turn off your mobile devices kasi it will, it will hamper daw, hamper daw yung mga navigational or yung mga in-flight navigational systems. But for the vis their vision for 6G, uh, meron na pong service. Actually, it is it is part of the International uh, Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO na kailangan talagang patayin yung mga mobile devices. But if we 
already attain attain yung yung uh, target uh, I'll just type target altitude ng eroplano pwede na yan pwede nyo lang buksan yung mobile device para hindi lang ma ma, 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 ma makapag disrupt makapag disrupt sa uh, in flight navigational system ng ng airplane kasi kasi yun yung sabi ng piloto yun din sabi ng flight attendant di ba but once you attain the target altitude pwede mo lang tanggalin temporarily yung uh, seat belt mo okay and you can go on you know go go to the comfort room or you want to make uh, some body stretches pag uh, nagbabiyahe kayo sa eroplano but here the use case is in flight broadband internet which is wala ito ngayon sa airline industry napaka mahina siguro pa ang internet but this is part of the vision of ETRI of South Korea so ito yung parameter sa kailangan kailangan ultra mobility and ultra coverage yun lang so gaya na sinabi ko 5G and going to 6G I'm sure na lalabas itong HAPS at NTN siguradong sigurado ako in my technical opinion that this kind of use case ng 6G vision ni ETRI kailangan na kailangan yung mga satellite networks tama ba? Uh, do, you, do you agree guys? do you agree or disagree? okay so I hope you agree and of course high speed trains mga bullet trains yun yung problema sa mga bullet trains the current 4G and 5G networks cannot compensate the speed ng mga bullet trains kasi halos uh, ano kasi halos uh, you know uh, almost traveling like a speed of light ang mga bullet trains di ba so because of 5G meron na tinatawag na na massive MIMO and beam forming it can now compensate doon sa issues ng mga bullet train because of this beam forming technology that it is also introduced in 5G magkakaroon sila ng adequate na coverage okay now if we're talking about the vision of 6G they will give 1 gigabit per second for high speed trains so ang ganda so even if you're in a bullet train you can still enjoy the seamless and very promising services ni 6G yun yung point doon okay then next ano pa digital twin okay for the digital twin of course pwede ito sa tourism gaming automotive ano yung kailangan daw according to ETRI kailangan daw niya na parameters more on the broadband precision and energy na naman okay and for the digital twin for the four dimension na yung yung meron ng hologram uh, ganun lang din pero more on the broadband and the precision yung bandwidth okay and for the self driving cars as you can see in the uh, slide so they are more on the what coverage coverage and latency okay for the smart city of course energy yan kasi malaki yung it's it's a wider scale ang kinaka-cover kinaka ni smart city type of ano coverage as per their vision ha? okay and for the telepresence six uh, telepresence can also be applied in 6G according to their vision ito yung mga parameters lang na kailangan so ganun katindi ang ginagawa pala ng mga contributors for 6G na hindi natin alam okay so very very promising and of course very interesting hopefully we can experience this one in the future okay ito naman it's another 
organization. And this one, it's uh, University of Surrey. I think it's in Finland or Honolulu. Ito. Their vision is more on what? Society na. More on the societal norms. Ang ano, uh, kanilang vision for contributing 6G in the society. So, medyo more on vertical to. Not on the uh, industry, but for the people, ang sa kanila, itong 6G, uh, ano, uh, group 6, 6G IC. Okay? And ito, uh, who is familiar for Qualcomm? By the way, uh, just to be interactive, guys, para, lama, para naman may information tayo. Who is Qualcomm? By the way. Who is Qualcomm? Okay. Uh, Eto la lang, I'll just change the question. Ano yung ininvento ni Qualcomm? Yung specific po, yung yung specific uh, related sa ating webinar, yung specific na ininvento ni Qualcomm. Anong klaseng chipset? Very good. LAN chipsets, mobile chipsets for Wi-Fi. For Wi-Fi. That's very good. Okay. Even ano pa? Processors. Yes, that's good. Okay. So now Ito naman yung i-contribute daw as a 6G vision sabi ni Qualcomm. Ito. Ano yung napapansin niyo guys? Ano yung napapansin niyo? It's more on the applications. Ano? Ano yung yung sabi ni release ano release 17 kanina yung nasa gitna. More on the interface. Di ba? interface so more on the applications ang vision ni Qualcomm so you can see it's small on the interface yung sinabi ko kanina human to human human to machine and then machine to machine diba so napakaganda ang itong kay ano kay Qualcomm diba very immersive ubiquitous and sabi daw ni Qualcomm it will take human augmentation to the next level so ibig sabihin mismo yung human na pumasok sa digital world it is almost like that augmented if merong augmented reality so that it can mix it can mix it on into the human world reality kagaya nung maglalaro ka ng Pokemon Go parang ganun that is that is augmented reality but according to Qualcomm yung 6G vision niya babalik ta rin na human interface will now go inside the digital world so ganun ka ganun ka tindi yung vision ni Qualcomm almost similar naman sila lahat yung kanilang mga contributions but uh, if you if you read or if you see your, or if you appreciate etong part 2 ng webinar very promising very promising i'm not saying it will be perfect but it will be promising kaya na sinabi ko these technologies will still be subject to change di ba so According to the vision of Falcom, very promising and interesting. Diba? Okay, ito naman. Who knows this company, by the way? Ano yung nai-contribute ni Nokia sa ating industriya, by the way? Uh, na, I'm not talking about the technology. Ano yung naibigay ni Nokia pala? sa ating society. Very simple po. Yes, mobile phones. Without Nokia, wala tayong mobile phones. They are the pioneers of the mobile phone industry. Okay, now, since kilalang kilala nyo si Nokia, I'm very very sure, imposible lamang walang nakakakilala kay Nokia, Ito naman yung kanilang 6G vision. Ano? So almost the same but ito yung ito yung 
ano, napansin, uh, sino yung nakapansin dito yung iba? Kanina, digital world, di ba? Now, ano, biological. So, grabe yung vision for 6G, itong si Nokia. Lahat, real-time, physical world, digital and biological will have an interface daw. So, grabe, grabe. <laughs> grabe yung, uh, uh, for me, I, I, I agree, partly. I agree, partly. I, I, I did not agree on this. I agree only on this 6G vision for Nokia, partly lang. There are parts na agree ako. Kasi bakit? Okay, I will give you one example. Yung, ano, uh, sa 5G. Di ba? 5G, we can complement or add AI, ML, ano pa? Ano pa? Di ba? Di ba? More on the computing yung 6G vision ni Nokia. So, ganun katindi. How much more in 6G? Ito na. Real-time lahat. Biological world. Physical, digital, and ano pa? Ubiquitous. So, gra grabe ka. Ang, uh, ganun katindi. <laughs> ganun katindi si Nokia. Okay? Next. Ito. Sino yung nakakalap kay Erickson? Who knows, Erickson? Ano yung nai-contribute niya? By the way, marami, actually, marami. Ah, <coughs> uh, yes, music. Music. Music, by the way, and, of course, equipment. Yes, equipment. Yeah, also camera. Pero kaso, naunahan na sila ng ibang companies. Yeah, so now, going back to Ericsson, ito yung vision. Okay, ito yung vision niya. So, yung vision niya is what? More on, ano? What, guys? Ano yung pinaka malapit na nakikita nyo sa screen? Okay, ito. Let me enhance it further. Ano yung keyword dyan na meron sa iba na wala sa iba rin? Ano? Ito, itong words na to, according to the vision of Ericsson, yung iba merong kaparehas, but this time kay Ericsson, ito, trustworthy and cognitive. Ibig sabihin, if, if from the word trustworthy, dyan napapasok yung mga security, security uh, network security by the way, so dyan papasok, is it trustworthy? Diba? So, napakaganda ng 6G vision ni Ericsson. So, there are other uh, 6G vision introduced like this many uh, parameters or attributes or metrics na meron sa iba na wala din sa iba. Okay? So, yan. So, very promising talaga yung mga contributions ng kada ano, respective and famous companies. Meron din ibang organizations ng mga bago sa inyo, pero they are also considered as the contributors for their, ano, each particular and specific 6G vision. Okay? Kasi yung iba, nagsilabasan yung mga 6G vision, research and development, because they want to contribute to make it as a standard. Ganon, di ba? Once a standard policy framework is in place, kailangan na kailangan yan, i-inventuhin ng mga manufacturers. Tapos, sino yung mag-implement? Pag meron ng inimbento, kasi ano siya eh, naka-policy, naka-framework, na parang, parang batas, ika nga. So, sino yung mag-implement? para magkakaroon tayo ng 6G services, the operators. Ganon. Ganon po yun. Merong proseso. 
Hindi basta-basta na meron kang na-invento, gusto mo na yan yung implement. No. There are certain uh, rules, conditions, uh, policies until maisama ang isa sa kanila or lahat as a standard. So, ganun po yun. So, I hope you uh, understand it fully, guys. Okay? Ito. So, this is a review. And also, ito din yung uh, uh, very uh, promising ika nga, hopefully. Uh, uh, and also, a big contributor in the society. Especially in the healthcare. For 6G, we call it immersive reality or mixed reality also included. So, Microsoft already invented HoloLens. Meron na ng version 2 eh. But it's not yet, ano, commercially distributed or bin, yung binibenta. Wala pa. Kasi kung meron pa eh, marami na sanang bumili, di ba? Yung mga may pera dyan. So, because of this innovation by Microsoft and according to them, they wanted it also to be included on the standardization phase. It looks promising talaga. Very promising. Why? For the healthcare, it is a big goal, big contribution to the society as well, not just the industry, di ba? Imagine, just imagine, this will be what our frontliners in the medical industry will be doing, will be operating. Diba? Remote surgery, e-healthcare. Diba? So, napaka-promising talaga. And 6G networks can power this industry innovations. Diba? Napakaganda. Okay. 6G, extended reality. Yung sinasabi ko na immersive reality. The umbrella for those three realities. Ito din yung vision nila. Wala pa ito, but hopefully, this will be implemented. What I'm saying implemented, yung user experience, yung, 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 ano na, yung ginagamit na natin on our daily lives, sana, in the near future, di ba? Very interesting, guys. 6G what 6G can offer to us and into the industry and the society as well. Diba? Napakaganda. And eto, for the education, sino naman ang hindi gustong maging achiever yung mga anak natin? Diba? Here, for education, transforming how children learn and play according to NTT Docomo of Japan. So for 5G and including 6G, Malaking bagay yung ano, immersive reality for their education. Ganon, katindi. <laughs> Very promising and interesting talaga, guys. Di ba? And, eto naman. For tourism, not just job generation, but for tourism, it can also enhance further, powered by 6G networks, yung tourism industry natin. Pero, what's new? What's what's new guys for this immersive reality embedded for our tourism or pwede natin tawagin e-tourism for example ganun e-tourism so just you know according to the instruction sabi dito sa slide point your camera at the picture below to see into the celtic times okay so ibig sabihin kung immersive reality powered by 6G networks for example so marami na mga sensor networks inside the museum for example pumunta ka or even nasa bahay ka or any remote place and you are not there attending face to face in the museum or inside the museum once makita mo itong sabi natin sir parang picture na sir akala ko QR code pwedeng QR code pwedeng ganito kasi ito yung vision nila eh. hindi na QR code eh. it's their vision hindi pa totoo but it's it looks promising di ba once you once tinapat mo yung camera, okay, once tinapat mo yung camera, it, it's not just your smartphone will enable the application, but also the sensor networks may be installed in every corner of the museum so that it can initiate 
or initialize yung ano, immersive reality. Hindi lang 3D, hindi lang virtual reality. Lahat na immersive reality so that you can experience that you are like inside the Celtic times, yung, yung medieval era. Medieval era. Parang ganun. Parang ikaw na yung pumasok sa sa reality na yun. So, it's 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 very promising, di ba? 6G networks. Tapos may mga sensors dyan na na-installed sa loob ng museum and you don't want to go kasi malayo siguro. You, you are in a remote location and you want to 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 go inside this specific uh, era. For example, uh, panahon nila King Arthur. Okay, so uh, itapat ko lang yung camera dito, then you will be inside that reality. So napakaganda. Di ba? <laughs> uh, looks promising talaga. Itong 6G for the tourism industry. So uh, are you enjoying pala guys? Are you enjoying? Uh, okay, so thank you sir. Okay, let's proceed. Ito naman. Sino yung gusto ng work-life balance in the near future? Sino yung gusto, sino yung hindi? Okay, so in terms of work-life balance, syempre lahat tayo gusto. Ayaw, ayaw ko ng stress Ayaw ko nang bumiyahe doon sa sa opisina kasi ang mahal na ng ng gasolina pero mas mura pa yung internet kasi kaysa sa konsumo ng gasolina so I want to be you know I want to work remotely so meron pa ring work life balance just like this guy oh okay uh, sino itong ano anong klasing prof profes profession itong nasa slide guys Sino uh, anong klase ng profession itong nasa slide? Can you guess? Yes, it's a doctor. Pero uh, malaking pasalamat din sa ating mga frontliners by the way, including the doctors, yung mga medical frontliners natin. Uh, thank you pala sa kanila. Syempre sila gu gusto din nila na, na magkaroon ng work life balance, di ba? Especially what we are facing and what we faced, by the way, since 2020, yung pandemic. So, syempre, sila bilang tao, gusto din nilang mag-avail ng work-life balance. But for this 6G and even 5G or even 6G, immersive reality powered by 6G can give work-life balance as well to all of us including these medical frontliners. So, dyan napapasok yung kagaya ni sir, kagaya ni sinabi ni sir, telemedicine, including telepresence, and e-healthcare, by the way. And remote surgery, kasama na dyan. Remote surgery. ba? Diba? Akala mo nasa opisina siya, pero kung nasa bahay siguro yan. ba? Diba? So, uh, less stress, more work can be done. Because, Kung meron kang stress, just like today, nowadays, yes, you can also do teleconsultation because you can uh, communicate remotely with each other sa iyong mga pasyente. Diba? So, with this, syempre, uh, alam na alam natin, pag sobra yung stress natin, we cannot be productive anymore sa ating trabaho. So, Diba? Very, very promising itong immersive reality powered by 6G networks according to their vision. Ha? Vision ito, hindi pa ito totoo. But hopefully, uh, it will come. Hopefully, uh, I, uh, anybody wants to have a taste of uh, 6G as well, diba? Next, ito. Immersive reality will impact everyone and everything. This is the summary of what I have just said. It will have an impact talaga. Di ba? Even for gamings, okay. Sino ba ang gusto maglaro na merong lag dito? Sinong gusto na meron lag sa games? Wala, di ba? But this time, the games is more immersive. Immersive from the from the root word immerse. Immersive. Yun yung sinasabi ko na 
halos ikaw na ang nasa loob ng virtual games. Diba? Uh, di, di ba nakita nyo ito? Transform how children learn and play. Ibig sabihin, education and as well as sa gaming na industry. Because, you know, gaming industry nowadays, guys, it is also a, a big business. Big business din itong gaming. So, immersive reality powered by 6G networks as part of the vision in the near future, it will have a big impact. Diba? Next, eto, yung sinabi ko kanina, e-tourism. Next is the, ano pa, syempre, communicates, communicating with the, our loved ones and also for work. Kagaya nito, working professionals. Diba? Working professionals collaborating, working uh, in a certain project, for example, di ba? So, ganun ka katindi ang immersive reality powered by 6G networks. And as well as for the, sino? Health and fitness at saka yung mga kapatid natin na, ano, mga kapatid natin na mga PWDs. They are also part of our society. They need special attention. But because of this, because of this, immersive reality powered by 6G networks as part of the vision, it can also greatly help our mga kababayan na merong PWD. Bakit? Innovations can help them on their daily needs. Kagaya ng ito, wheelchair. You can invent wheelchairs or you can step up your invention ng, ng isang simpleng wheelchair sa ating mga kapatid na mga B PWD in a more ano, sustainable way. Diba? Sustainable, innovative, helpful para sa kanila. Diba? So, because they are also people and they are part of the society, we can, or the contributors or even the companies that contributes or invents or inventing such uh, innovations, they can also contribute to them. Diba? So, not just, for example, sila, mga, mga PWD, they want to enjoy as a human being to run, to make, uh, you know, a skiing activity to ride bikes and climb mountains but it is impossible for them kasi syempre PWD sila eh. but because of these uh, gadgets wearables powered by XR and in 6G networks we can also let them enjoy what we are also enjoying so so na na nakapag-contribute na naman tayo dun sa sa kay United Nations yung SDG di ba? Di ba? Do you agree guys? So 6G networks is very promising talaga. Very promising. Hopefully we can we can experience this one talaga in the near future kasi uh, our younger generation of engineers will surely be one of the innovators, frontliners or working professionals sa 6G na panahon. Okay? So, I hope you enjoyed. And of course, ito, Digital Twin. So, isa ito sa mga vision nila, Digital Twin. Okay? This is part of their uh, 6G vision. And of course, hologram. Ito, sino bang hindi nakakapanood ng Star Wars? Diba? Hologram. It means if there are hardwares installed, for example, in your company, in, in a certain conference room, lahat kompleto, then you will power up it with five, uh, yung 6G. So both hardware, end-to-end, -end, and, uh, and the application, and the connectivity is in place. So... Siguro naman, in the near future, ma-achieve natin yung hologram, di ba? So, 
it, it really it really looks promising before it is just you know nasa palabas lang uh, we 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 are astonished we are overwhelmed we are astonished on what this movie gave us but in the near future hopefully in line with our specialization our being electronics engineers hopefully we will enjoy this one in reality hopefully diba ah uh, ito sino bang hindi nakakapanood nitong ano movie na to the kingsman as you can see guys they are currently in a meeting but they are not what in person at the same time diba so as you can see as you can see it's called holographic telepresence so it is a combination of your holographic location and the location in where you are attending a conference just like this and because of the massive connectivity massive broadband very 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 low latency those dots or tiny dots represents a single information but because the latency is very 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 much low massive ang broadband bandwidth massive ang connectivity tiny dots can be what can be realized and it will form many informations with less delay or no delay at all then it can create this holographic telepresence yun po yung ibig sabihin nun diba so napaka promising itong 6G network in the future diba next ito okay possibly naman hindi nyo alam drones but this time this drone is now powered by 6G according to their uh, uh, vision okay wala pa ito wala pang wala pang nagbebenta ng ganito meron lang nag-evento but it's not yet commercialized it's not yet approved for ano commercialization hindi pa approved meron lang gumawa i'm sure pero it's not yet approved for commercialization okay just just uh, uh, put in mind guys just remember that one so according to entity docomo 6G you can apply 6G for this kind of innovation drone but this time may sumakay po na tao it's like you know it can be applied as a use case scenario for air transportation okay so <laughs> ganun katindi pa lang ang 6G sa vision pa lang very promising very interesting di ba this is according to NTT Docomo by the way okay eto si Erickson naman This is what I'm telling you about. Kung merong Internet of Things, Erickson, according sa kanyang vision, Internet of Senses, Digital Senses. Okay? So, by the way, guys, to be interactive, alam nyo naman kung ilan yung mga body senses natin, ano yung specific na senses na hindi pa nagagamit in terms of telecommunications okay can you guess it guys yes that's correct smell and taste wala pa touch meron na touch meron na hearing yung pandinig meron na and also yung sight eto na lang yung dalawa and according to Ericsson they are introducing internet of senses because they want to include smell and taste so ganun kat ganun katindi pala ang ginagawa na nila in the background na hindi natin alam they are already doing r&d sir ano yung r&d research and development of these prestigious companies na to And not just companies, these manufacturers, uh, universities, well-known universities, kaya nung yung pinakita ko sa video presentation. So, uh, you see how 
how 6G will have a bigger impact to us in the near future. Diba? So, grabe. Grabe talaga. I, I cannot imagine how I can send a kind of sense to be traveled in this infrastructure. Then you will receive it. Ah, okay. Ano yung pinadala ko uh, sa'yo? Uh, Banggayan, di ba? Oh, yes. It tastes like mango. But in digital form. So, nap napaka... <laughs> napaka tindi nitong mga visions nila okay that's that's by Ericsson okay so here this is the one I'm talking about it's the the new verticals this is from ITU yung grupo na sinabi ko kanina ITU FGNet 2030 go eto naman yung kanilang uh, use case According to their vision, ito yung mga use case applications na pwede nating i-apply yung mga technologies, ah, sorry, yung mga capabilities para powered by 6G because it will enable further yung vertical markets. Okay. So ito, by 2030, social and entertainment. So ito na, diniscuss ko na kanina at saka, dinis, at saka yun din yung mga Uh, contributions ng mga visions ng ibang mga companies but also according to ITU ito naman yung sa kanila on year 23, 2030 for under the social and entertainment this will be the new market so when we say market by the way itong keyword na market this is more on you know there will be jobs that will be removed and there will be new jobs will be introduced. Hindi ibig sabihin that machines will take over our lives and we will be jobless. No, I don't believe on in that one. There is still human intervention pagdating dito sa year 2030, di ba? But these are the new vertical markets that will be introduced according to the vision ni ITU. So, very promising na naman yung kanyang uh, use case scenario contributions, di ba? Okay, so, eto, this is just a review. Just to compare others, eto yung pinakita ko kanina sa inyo, guys. Eto yung kay ETRI. So, eto naman, it's another uh, group eto from University of Ulu, Finland. So, eto yung kanilang uh, use case scenario. 6G, their vision for 6G can be applied, but yung kanilang uh, target will be more on business, sa business side sila. You see? So, halos lahat. Yung kanilang na contribute more on political, economics, social, technological, even sa ating government. So napakaganda itong 6G by the way. Uh, very promising. Yes. Even though it is more on paper discussion, more on paper discussion, but you will see how we can compare 5G and 6G for this one. And here. That's what I've said. Let's compare 5G and 6G. So, merong mga uh, specific specific areas na si 5G pala, which is already uh, existing here in the Philippines right now, meron pala pa rin siyang mga, you know, challenges na gagawin kasi meron pang mga kulang na dapat i-enhance further. So now we are we are comparing use case scenarios by 5G and 6G. So for the AR industry, meron pang mga kulang na dapat i-improve si 5G compared sa si compared kay 6G. And for the telepresence, meron din and so on and so forth. Okay. So, yan po. Uh, it doesn't mean that 5G is already perfect. 
but still it is evolving kaya nga kaya nga doon sa sinabi ko na na pag pagumpisa ni 4G pag pagumpisa ni 4G nung nilabas nila si 4G noon sabi nila the other term of 4G is LTE which is correct ano ba ibig sabihin ni, ni LTE long term evolution so this is also partly like LTE 5G and 6G is also in a long term evolution di ba so 5G meron pa ring mga mga konti lang man konti lang na mga improvements but in 6G in comparison they are doing it for the better for the betterment ika nga you see for the data center wireless meron pang konting problema si 5G but for 6G it it can it can uh, you know uh, do more uh, improvement Okay, so again, this is just a review so that ma, ma, ano naman ninyo, ma, ma absorb naman ninyo, at saka marami din kayong takeaways for this one. Just like here, syempre, release 21, 22, that will be for 6G. Okay? Okay, so, gaya ng sinabi dito, release 17, this is for the start of, ano, 45G and onwards. Okay, so as per agreement for them, their timeline, it can change. It can be late. It can be early. Kaya nga ang tawag timeline. But they have an agreement that hopefully by these years, after a 10-year plan also, hopefully that uh, more releases will come out. More standards, by the way. Ang ibig ko sabihin. Okay. So, yan po. That's their timeline. Si 3GPP. And of course, again, as a review, kagaya ng kanina, kada launch, there is already a separate parallel activity going on, which is another research, another research for a new and another uh, generation of technology. So ganun po yon. Ibig sabihin, we, uh, we we did not know pala na no we are enjoying 5G. They are already doing uh, this kind of research in the background na hindi natin alam, di ba? Okay, so eto naman. So ZTE, I'm sure you know this guys. According to ZTE, ZTE of China, ito naman yung kanilang timeline for 6G starting from March 2020. So ito. So halos ganun din. Almost they are somewhat similar to each other that meron silang ano, vision, their own timeline, their own target. But they are almost the same. Kasi ang masusunod pa, di, pa rin dyan, si ITU. ITU pa rin ang masusunod. Okay? Because they, they are one of, of an example of a governing body. Meron silang mandate din. ba? So they are almost the same. But at least, uh, here in the webinar, we know that kada company, they are almost the same with each other in terms of their respective and specific uh, target for their 6G. Diba? So as you can see, ZTE, oh, ano yung nakikita nyo kay ZTE? Diba may NTN Plus? So yun na yun, yung NTN Plus can be applied sa 5G and even 6G. By the way guys, NTN, for your information, NTN, it's called Non-Terrestrial Networks. Okay? Non-Terrestrial Networks. Okay, uh, just a question para interactive naman. What are terrestrial networks and what are non-terrestrial networks? Give me an example. 
kada isa, ano yung example? Okay? Ano yung example ng terrestrial at saka non-terrestrial? Can you guess it, guys? Yes, for terrestrial, it's visa because it is it is situated on the ground. And even mobile cell towers, okay, they are called terrestrial. But for non-terrestrial, yan na po yung mga satellites like HAPS. Yan. Yung mga blimps. Yan. Yan yung mga yan ang mga examples for NTN. Okay guys, so just for your information. Okay, for now kay 6G flagship yung certain ano it is another organization, yung university. Okay? University of Surrey. Ito naman yung kanilang ano timeline. So it is uh, also somewhat similar through the 3GPP and ITU, di ba? So nakita nyo, almost the same. The, the target will be 2030 or earlier. Depende na yun sa kanilang, sa kanilang uh, timeline. Because timeline, it is not a, an exact date. A milestone can be considered as an exact date of the project, project life cycle, for example. But kung timeline, it can be early and it can be late okay so i hope clear sa inyo okay guys so ito naman si samsung almost similar but ano yung ginawa ni samsung they included two years early 2028 sabi niya 2028 so medyo napaaga kaya nga ang, ang sinabi dito eight years or shorter but it's not It's not uh, going to happen uh, really because it's called a timeline. They can develop it as early as possible or later or even yung in, yung insaktong 2030 talaga. So yan po yung ibig sabihin. It's a timeline. And this is now according to Samsung. So almost similar, guys, ang target. It will be 2030. Okay? And of course, ito. Gaya ng sinabi ko, hindi mawawala yung term na vision. Vision. Okay? So, I hope you enjoyed. Next. Ito. Hindi rin napapatalo si Japan. NTT. Docomo of Japan. So, yung use case requirements naman nila, ito. Ito na yung kanilang 5G going to 6G na parang uh, transformation or yung requirements na mismo ang sinabi requirements so tinalo pa niya si 5G ganun katindi <laughs> ganun katindi ang gagawin pala ni ano ni Japan okay so very very promising talaga and interesting by the way okay so eto naman eto is per research eto is in general na ito. General research na ito. So according to this general research for for 6G visions and kinumpere pa nila yung mga KPIs or yung mga key performance indicators which is alam na alam ko na alam nyo mga electronics engineers yung mga technical specifications, technical parameters just like what? Peak data rate, okay, PDR. Now, they are, as per research nila, comparing 5G to 6G. Sa technical side naman, ito yung comparison nila. Okay? Ito yung comparison nila. So, as you can see, ano yung pinaka-importante dyan? Guys, sa tingin nyo, ano yung pinaka-importante uh, parameter which we are Uh, want to enjoy 5G and 6G as well. So yes, latency, that's number one. Ano pa? Meron pa isa, meron pa isa sir? Meron pa iba? 
Meron pa iba, not, not just the latency, what are the other KPIs involved here? It's in the slide that it is very promising. Yes, data rate, yung bandwidth, yung download natin, yung do, doon tayo, uh, doon tayo karamihan, uh, nag-expect data rates, not just the latency. Meron pa isa, meron pa isa, last one, meron pa isa. This is very, very important. Isa. Can you guess it, guys? Para interactive naman. Can you guess? Na, andyan na po sa slide. Andyan na po sa slide. Very important. Electronics engineers po tayo. De no, no, no. The other one. The other one. Yes. Reliability. Reliability. Yes. Reliability. Why? How reliable that this connection in general, etong 5G, etong 6G, how reliable are these parameters for us? Kaya nga tawag reliability. How reliable in terms of KPI etong si 5G at saka si 6G? Ito, alam na alam ito ng mga, mga RF engineers. When we are doing optimization activity, this is one of the many important parameters that we are checking. Reliability. Okay, guys? So I hope this is clear and I hope you see the comparison for 5G and 6G. Napaka laki ng difference. Ang laki ng difference talaga. How much more if if uh, there is already 6G right now? So so the industry is already powered by 6G and 5G as well. So napaka you know, napaka ganda talaga in the society as well. Sana mabutan natin ito, di ba? So, very, very promising. And very interesting as well. Okay, so ito naman tayo sa spider diagram. According to ETRI, ito. Now, ito yung as per KPI sa spider diagram. And guys, yung light blue, yan yung 5G. And yung dark blue, that is the 6G. Now, you can compare it. According to the spider diagram, yan yung comparison sa 5G comparing 6G. So yung nasa gitna, yung light blue, yan yung KPIs ni 5G. So mas lalo na si 6G. Very, very promising. So 1 tera peak data rate. User experience data rate, 1 GPPS. Ibig sabihin, kung si 5G kanina, ano yung 5G? For example, merong, for example, peak hours, tapos ano daw, guaranteed, guaranteed anywhere. Meron kang ano, kay 5G, merong guaranteed na 1 Mbps, di ba? Kagaya nung sinabi nung isang moderator natin, kahit saan daw siya, nag-try daw siya ng 5G SIM card, more than 100 Mbps anywhere guaranteed. Ngayon, Sky 6G, ano? Ano guys? Ano? Sige, it's, it's in the diagram. It's in the spider diagram. Can you guess it guys? Can you guess it? 1 GPPS. So ganun, ganun katindi. Ganun katindi ang, ang 6G vision and promise for us daw in year 2030. So, <laughs> kahit saan, kahit malayo ka sa cell, sa cell site, ha? just imagine, kahit malayo ka, may meron ka ng 1 giga. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you see, industry can be powered, di ba? And even the latency, and also the latency, and the reliability, and the, the connection den density, yung yung uh, area on how many devices in a specific square foot or square meter, how many uh, devices can be connected in a in a specific uh, footprint, footprint, okay, footprint, ang tawag doon. So you, you see, it's, it's very, very promising talaga. 
6G. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. Next. Ito. Ito yung according kay Samsung, almost similar talaga yung comparison ni ETRI at saka ni Samsung uh, 5G versus 6G. Almost in enhance. Almost enhanced yung tatlong yung tatlong ano, ito, itype ko na naman. Uh, ito. Mas naging enhanced yung tatlo ni 5G pag dating ni 6G. So ganun lang kasi may intindihin. Di ba? So <laughs> very promising talaga si 6G. And of course, ito. Ito. Comparison na naman. Ito, this time, starting from 2G. You see, very promising talaga yung every evolution ng every generation. Very promising. Looks promising talaga, guys. Di ba? Starting from 2G hanggang 6G na. Very promising yung enhancements, yung evolution. <laughs> di ba? Just imagine kung 6G na tayo ngayon. Just imagine, guys. Di ba? Napakaganda. Napapa, napakaganda pero eto eto na naman ano yung ano yung meron kay 6G yung pula guys ano yung pula ano yung sinulat ng ano yung ano ano yung uh, footnote footnote na nakalagay kay 6G ano ano yung sinabi ko kanina subject to change subject to change pa rin okay So I hope you you are very you know interested, overwhelmed, astonished, di ba? Okay. Ito naman. Activities naman tayo. Ano yung pinaggagawa nitong mga first world countries? Okay, let's start from China. Grabe si China. Ang ginagawa pala ni China ngayon, meron siyang ginawa na parang committee and group that Uh, doing research and development in collaboration with other partner partner organizations. So, ibig sabihin, hindi lang hindi lang uh, single country, but there are uh, different countries sharing a common goal para sa ano sa telecommunications industry. So, eto yun. So, they created a committee. Meron mga technical working group. Kanya-kanyang specialization. You see. Grabe, 57 members. So hindi ibig sabihin na na they are politically uh, doing this one, but this is more on the consumer and business. Walang halong politika po ito. So you see, gra grabe pala yung hindi hindi pala natin alam, meron pala silang ginagawa na hindi natin alam. They are already conducting research for 6G <laughs> this time na hindi natin alam. So ga ganun katindi Mul multi multi company talaga all star all star cast talaga dito. Nokia, Samsung, ZTE, Ericsson, Huawei, even operators. <laughs> so this is, you know, they share a common goal talaga para sa atin din. Para sa society, di ba? And industry pala. Okay, so ito, key technologies yung mga aktibidades na ginagawa for 6G in China. Grabe. <laughs> Grabe pala. We are already, you know, medyo hindi tayo na-update pala dito sa Pilipinas. Ito na pala yung ginagawa nila. We are not updated pala. Thank you, sir, sa webinar mo. So, you see, if merong massive MIMO for making massive MIMO antennas, meron na pala silang ginagawang extreme MIMO. Ganon katindi. <laughs> Ganon katindi. And now, they are researching because they want to use this untapped, untapped frequencies which, has, which is in terahertz. But this is just, you know, under study pa. Terahertz communications. Wala pang gumagamit dyan. 
di ba? And of course, advanced modulations and coding schemes, importante yun yan. Just like in 5G, how can you, uh, in, in modulation point of view, how can you, uh, you know, give more channels to many users if ito lang yung frequencies available, di ba? So there are modulation techniques, advanced modulation techniques out there and also being used in 6G and also new schemes and modulation techniques that will be introduced in, 5, uh, in 6G in the future. So napak napakalaking uh, ano yan, uh, key technology advancement, di ba? So for the network, of course, ito na. Wireless, tapos na tayo. Ito naman, integration of AI and communications. Then dito sa baba, yung network key technologies, because of 6G, na mga activities na ginagawa ni China na hindi natin alam, meron na pala silang ni-research and development in relation to the network architecture, which is, we all know already, yung MEC or yung mobile edge computing for the, the space area naman, yung mga NTNs, hubs, yung mga satellites, at saka ito yung pinaka-importante pinaka sa 5G din, at saka 6G. Deterministic. Sa 5G, the only deterministic capability that 5G has is yung scheduling. Because with this deterministic uh, uh, I'll type ah dahil merong deterministic scheduling si 5G dyan na pwede magagamit yung slice, network slicing uh, ano pa virtualization, containerization uh, mobile edge computing edge cloud edge cloud as a service, so on and so forth, because of this deterministic scheduling. But dito sa 6G pala, it is more entirely in a wider scale. Yung mismong network na is deterministic. Grabe kaganda. Ang ganda pala ang may bibigay ng 6G. In terms sa networking aside, deterministic na yung buong network. So, ganun. <laughs> ganun katindi. Ganun katindi si 6G pala, okay? So, are you enjoying, guys? Malapit na po tayo matapos. Okay, so, next. Ito, Japan. Hindi rin napapatalo si Japan. But, Japan, they are more, you know, in partnership with the government because they need a big what big capital for 6G so they 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 you know they made a partnership with the government so that while they will invest hindi naman sila mas short sa kanilang capex and later on sa kanilang opex when they will start implementing 6G in Japan. So ito yung ibig sabihin. Behind the scenes, ito na pala yung ginagawa nila ni Japan. Okay. Next, uh, by the way, kay Japan, they are more targeting in the infrastructure. Okay. So, of course, ito, Japan. Ito yun. They want to overcome these challenges for their technological advancement. So, ito. Ito talaga yung kay Japan. So, matindi rin. Matindi rin si Japan. Okay. Tapos, merong interesting point dito. The expansion of communications coverage in the sky, sea, and space. Diba? Hindi lang dito sa lupa. Dati, Dito natin tinatayo yung ating uh, network coverage but now for 6G even 5G they are now by Japan they are now targeting their technological advancements 
doon na sa taas. So, ganun katindi. <laughs> ganun katindi na pala yung ginagawa nila. 4-6G networks, okay? And of course, syempre, South Korea, hindi rin walang papatalo. Ito yung ginagawa nila. You see, they are also, uh, you know, they they also collaborated. They, they uh, tap with the government nila. And of course, they need to prepare. Kasi investment ito, so they need to prepare lots of capital for their uh, technological advancements in South Korea as well. Okay? Of course, US, hindi na papatalo din si US, North America. So, if North America, sigurado yan, USA yan. Hindi kasama si South America because it's it's another continent. Okay? North America, so of course, si US yan. And their group is yung si Next Generation Alliance or Next G. Alliance. So, they are also, halos pare-parehas din, they are also in relation to their, uh, you know, they, they, they tap their government as well for their capital kasi malaking investment itong 6G in the near future. Grabe. Grabe yung mga grants, funding, pera ang pinag-usapan dito muna. di ba? So, matindi. And of course, most of the Next G Alliance groups, as you can see, yung mga steering steering committee, mga malalaking kumpanya din, hindi basta-basta, US-based companies. Okay? And their goal is, of course, more on in collaboration with their government kasi malaking capital ang kailangan. Okay? Now, eto naman, it's another uh, 6G group. They call it Hexa X. This is from Europe naman. So ito, their target is almost similar to Ericsson. Digital, physical, and human world. Okay? So halos para-parehas sila yung mga visions nila. But still, it's, it's, it's promising talaga. It's very promising. Di ba? Okay. Ito yung kanina, si flagship uh, University of Ulu. So Finland. So they are more on ano, applications and wearables. Okay? And ito, si University of Surrey, kagaya nung pinakita ko kanina, ito yung kanilang grupo, 6GIC, Innovation Center for 6G. So their vision is more on what? Business. And ito, kakalimutan ba natin yung network architecture? So, eto, this is not yet, you know, eto ay hindi pa totoo. This is just, you know, like a vision as well. It is more on a vision na magiging ganito na daw yung network infrastructure. Okay, so, hindi natin pwedeng kalimutan na it is, you know, possible, it is possible that this will be yung gagawin nila ng mga operators na network infrastructure but this is not approved and this is not yet uh, commercialized by the way, okay? This is more on a vision but it can be possible okay? So according here, ano yung nawala pala guys? If you attended my technical webinars before, ano yung nawala dito? From the core network, ano yung nawala? Can you guess? Ano yung nawala? Ah, uh, yes, not yes. Ano wala copper? But I'm talking about the network infrastructure. Yes, the RAN. Nawala na si RAN. For your radio access network. Okay, so ibig sabihin sa 6G ang kanilang vision pwedeng tanggalin si RAN. So ano yung benefit doon? What's the benefit? It can further ano, further ano, 
further maintain yung latency. Tama ba o hindi? Uh, do you agree or not? Do you do you agree guys or not? Yes, I agree because you know in the first place ano yung meron sa run? Ano yung meron sa run? Di ba mga network elements? Network elements tapos sa core network, ano? Core network will be also but this time ano, I'll just type network network elements RNS Run, merong network elements, they are connected with each other as of this time, kasi meron pang run ngayon sa 5G. So, they are connected, and depende ko ano yung location ninyo, mga locations ninyo, it will have a travel time talaga, yung tinatawag na travel time, or yung latency nga. So, how much more in the core network, merong networking elements, routing and switching, how can you maintain yung target ni 5G which is ano yung target na naman latency latency di ba so eto this is not yet implemented but this is part of the vision na baka pwedeng tanggalin si RAN so that the latency can be much more much uh, be improved okay So, is it clear, guys? Is it clear? Is it clear po? Okay. So, ito, hindi pa ito totoo. This is just a vision. But it is possible. Okay? Yeah, that one. And, of course, 6G devices. Alam nyo na. Wearables. High-tech na lahat. Okay? Here. This is what I'm talking, you, talking to you about. Bakit nawala si RAN? Kasi according to their vision, si RAN, it will be integrated in the core network. It will be integrated in the core network. Okay? So, yan yung ibig sabihin. And it is called RAN core convergence. RAN core convergence. Okay? Okay, this is just a review, guys. Para naman maintindihan ninyo yung migration at saka roadmap ng network infrastructure. So, ito. This is just a review. Sigurado, ito. Alam na alam nyo na ito. 2G, 3G network. Ito. So, ano yung disadvantages ng 2G, 3G network infrastructure? Yan. Okay. So, it's clear, ha? Next, 4G. Nung naging 4G si 3G, ito yung kanyang Evolved Packet System. Ito na yung kanyang network infrastructure. Okay guys, so I hope it's clear. Then of course, sa 4G, doon nag-umpisa yung tinatawag na CAPS. Okay? Yan, after CAPS, na-implement na, yan na. Marami ng routing. But it doesn't mean maraming routing magiging pangit yung latency no mayroong ano ano yung kagandahan pag maraming uh, connectivity ano yung pinaka kagandahan dito guys sa mga IT IT experts diyan ano very simple guys yes redundancy hindi ibig sabihin na maraming connections bumabagal at pumapangit yung latency. No, it is just for redundancy purpose. That is also another, uh, shall we say, another uh, benefit bakit merong separation ng CUPS or yung CAPS. Okay guys, so at least malinaw ah, 4G pa lang ito. So okay. Now, ano yung nangyari dahil nagkaroon ng evolution sa network architecture? Naging scalable and separation of CAPS. Okay, so is it clear guys? Clear ba? Clear? 
Is it clear? Okay, thank you. So, now, here. 5G naman tayo. Ito yun. From NSA to SA, syempre. So, ito. Okay? From enhanced node B until nagiging ano na siya, G node B or yung next generation node B. So, ito yung evolution ng 5G, okay? And not just the evolution of the of the hardware, guys, ha? there is also an added subsystem and an evolution and this time it is called what? SBA. SBA. Service-based architecture. Nandito na. Dito nang gagaling yung mga tinatawag na virtualization, slicing, softwareization, cloudification, application of third-party interfaces or out or operating systems, exposure to third-party, that's good, and also backward and forward compatibility. So napakaganda. From 4G to 5G, o, tinan mo, ito lang yung, yung naibibigay na 4G. Tatlo lang. And here comes 5G. Ang dami. So what is the benefit of having a service-based architecture? Ano yung benefit? Sa mga IT experts, ano yung benefit ng 5G? Dahil meron ng service-based architecture uh, included in 5G networks. Ano yung benefits sa mga IT experts? Can you guess? Okay, so walang sasagot? Actually, ang sagot niyan is marami po. But I will give you one, I will give you one very, very, uh, very, very near answer to my question is that it will improve and it will have an efficiency to the utilization of resources. Yung utilization of resources naging efficient. Sir, paano mo nasabi na naging efficient yung resources? Yung resources galing sa core network. Now, in the core network, in the data center, they can introduce, because of this SBA, by 5G, they can further uh, make the management, monitoring, optimizing, orchestrating the services that we need through what? Virtualization, network slicing, softwareization, so on and so forth, including the routing and switching from 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 uh, transporting your data from this location to another from this network element to another so ganun po ka ang ano pinakamalapit na sagot diyan okay so at least uh, it's clear is it clear guys clear ba clear ba yung 5G SBA clear ba yung SBA Okay, thank you. So now here, eto, <laughs> this is the uh, detailed service-based architecture. Sir, bakit nasa control plane siya? Because this is, gaya ng sinabi ko, control. From the root word control, so it is control, of course, in the core network. In the core network. In the data center, di ba? In the data center. Now, what is what is the 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 good terminology na gagamitin natin when we are talking about service-based architecture? It's called what? It's called orchestration. Parang ikaw yung maestro in the control plane. In the control plane. You are like the maestro of a certain orchestra. That you are controlling all of those functions. Di ba nakikita niyo sir? Oh, nakikita niyo sa sa uh, right hand view. You see application function, it's all functions, it's all what applications, it's all what system, software, 
operated system. Okay? Kaya nga, functions ang tawag. Letter F ang nasa dulo. Application function, access and mobility management function, authentication server function, data network, front-end. But most of them are functions. Kaya nga, ang ibig sabihin, service-based yan. So that is one of the many upgrades ni 5G. So I hope it is clear. So now, nasa control plane siya. They separated it from the user plane. So walang madidisrupt na service galing doon sa user plane. Okay, so I hope it's clear guys. Napakadaling intindihin. Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, so next. Ito. This is one of my subtopics on my uh, deep dive we uh, webinar before. Network slicing is the new is the new trend for 5G. Network slicing. Okay? So, I hope you attended my webinar before. So, network slicing is one of the very core uh, benefit for 5G. Okay? And ito, of course, hindi ba natin makakalibutan yung evolution? Kagay kanina. Ano na ang meron si 5G? in relation to the evolution of the network architecture. Di ba? Ang, ang ganda na. More on virtualization, software-defined networking, and cloud-based na ang ano, uso. Cloud-based na ang uso. Even the data center, halimbawa, yung physical data center wala sa loob ng Pilipinas, Pero pwede tayong magawa ng cloud-based na data center sa Pilipinas. It can be possible. It can it can greatly help on the latency. Yes, I agree. I agree. So parang ganun. Kaya nga ang tawag, edge cloud, mobile edge computing. Pinalapit mo yung cloud type na data center nearest to your area so that, so that, we can experience the much needed lower latency. Okay? So, yun. Napaka ganda talaga ng benefit. And of course, gano'n sinabi ko, pag meron ng run and core convergence, nawawala na yung, ano, ano, run. But ano yung pinalit ng run? Mid-hole. And mid-hole, guys, okay, sa mga, ano, Sa mga fiber optic na experts, ano yung meron na facility or network facility sa mid-hole? Kasi tinanggal, unti-unti nang tinanggal yung run. So, naging mid-hole na ang pangalan. So, what is one example of a actual facility na isang example sa mid-hole? Sa mga fiber optic network, Fiber optic engineers, guys, na experts. Ano? Can you give Can you give a guess? Can you give a guess, guys? Can you give a guess? Ah, uh, yung specific po, yung specific, yung specific po. Ah, uh, hindi po yan. That is more on the residential side. Yung specific. Yung specific po. Uh, yes, but yung backbone is fiber. Pero yung specific. Okay, I'll tell you. Eto, sinabi ko na kanina. Eto, pon. Pon po, pon. Yes, pon. Yan. That will be the backbone, which is the mid-hole. Yan na po. So, nawala na yung run, di ba? Diba? So, wha what is the benefit for PON? Because it is a fixed network, it will also help, again, maintain, ito, it will also again help maintain latency. Diba? 
it will help. It will help. So that is, that is, kaya unti-unting nawawala yung run. Tapos doon na nilagay yung run sa core network. So ganun po. So is it clear guys? Is it clear? Is it clear? So, because a 6G run core convergence po. Okay, so I think it's clear. So ito, ito na po. For, 4G, uh, for 6G, ito na yung gagawin nila. Ano yung dinagdag guys? Ano yung dinagdag? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll compare this one. Ito for 5G. Ito for 5G. Ano yung bago kay 6G? Ano yung bago kay 6G? Can you guess guys? Para interactive naman. Can you, can you give a guess? Halos parehas but there is, there is something new in 6G. Ano? 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 No, it's not coreless pero papunta na papunta sa 6G yung coreless but not yet implemented. But for 6G actually, run core convergence and yung core network naging ano, next generation na. Next generation, okay? So I hope you you understand the guys. Okay, so here, ang kagandahan din ng 6G is there will be a harmony sa ating non-3GPP and 3GPP technology. So ano yon? Ibig sabihin, there will be also, uh, 5G can also support non-cellular standards. Anong isa doon? Wi-Fi, di ba? So Wi-Fi... I mean, 5G can now support Wi-Fi. So, ganun ka, ga, ga, ganun ka tindi. 6G can do that. 6G can do that, di ba? So, napakaganda na ng, ng, ng ecosystem, di ba? And of course, syempre, eto. Sabi, sabi ni NTT, eto. Uh, there will be a big gain sa 6G. Diba? And of course, merong summit na ginanap noon, uh, 2021. And uh, ito, ito yung mga, mga sinabi ni NTT Docom of Japan with regards to 5G and 6G. So, these are the target technologies. So matindi. So meron kayong makikita dito na virtual massive MIMO. Tapos karamihan is naka-smart automated na. And eto pa, meron pang isa which is yung the use of satellites for the coverage extension and ano, meron pang maganda. Eto, non-orthogonal physical layer on the networking side and also meron pa Artificial intelligence para sa run AI based so grabe grabe yung <laughs> grabe yung 6G enhancements na gagawin nila grabe lalagyan na nila ng artificial intelligence ang run so it can it can greatly help it can greatly help on the computing because without proper computing it is directly proportional on what having a good routing and switching performance merong it is directly related talaga pag hindi maganda yung ano computing there's something wrong with your routing and switching as well o, sa mga network uh, experts diyan i hope you agree okay so next ito ito yung mga target areas for 6G by Nokia uh run core convergence din so halos uh, related Hal halos related dun sa sinabi ko na na ito din pala yung target na gagawin ni Nokia mawawala yung run it will be converged and specialized sabi ni Nokia you see you see how how advanced they prepared in terms of network infrastructure pa lang guys di ba o tapos ito pa AI ML air interface 
So <laughs> napaka napakaganda ibig sabihin yung 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 BTS to 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 the users which is us kasi connected tayo sa cell site ibig sabihin si Nokia as per as per vision ni Nokia ito din yung target daw niya lalagyan daw niya ng artificial intelligence at saka machine learning mula sa BTS communicating with the smartphones tayo yung mga users ang tindi ang t- <laughs> ang tindi I, I cannot imagine this one di ba air interface uh, that is from the BTS going to the user equipment lalagyan nila ng AI at saka ML <laughs> I cannot imagine that one if it will happen guys di ba and also new spectrum technologies syempre gagamit sila ng higher frequencies Extreme connectivity, of course, yung security at saka sensory networks. So, ganon si Nokia ang tinte. So, eto rin, hindi din nagpapatalo si 6G flagship. So, this is more on the, ano, yung target nila na mga uncertainties, baka hindi, hindi magiging totoo yung mga, mga visions, but eto yung target nila na gusto nilang ma-realize talaga. Okay? Eto, uncertainties. High uncertainty, high impact, low sir uncertainty, low impact. Okay. Roman, si Innovation Center, 6GIC. There are they are more uh, focused pa rin. Hindi nagbago, focus din sila sa society and new verticals. Ito, yung taga Europe, yung pinakita ko na bagong group, Hexa G for 6G. More on ano na? Halos pare-pareha sila. sensory networks and ano artificial and and machine learning na more on machine to machine siya so halos pare-parehas but at least you will know that these contributors etong binanggit ko na mga companies mga organizations grabe yung yung kino-contribute nila for the sake of uh, realizing 6G in 2030 di ba grabe so eto it is probable probable lang hindi pa ito magiging uh, 6G technology duplexing uh, modulation modulation to technique coding scheme so on and so forth hindi pa ito sigurado for 6G but this is the probable na baka gagamitin and it will be included as a standard okay so ito just look at the uh, slides guys napaka grabe Ano na ano na pala sinyo guys it is not just coding and modulation it is more on sensing and ano artificial intelligence na more on computer grabe grabe na di ba So again uh, virtual coffee break lang po at least ma-refresh kasi malapit na malapit na po tayo matapos Okay So another uh, video so that you will understand ano ba yung importance ng routing and switching in 5G okay So sit back and relax guys nice. 5G gives enterprises the opportunity to develop new ways to bring unique products and services to market with greater efficiency To achieve this vision, communications service providers or CSPs need to create and deploy services that satisfy a wide range of application requirements, all on a shared network infrastructure. Network slicing can answer this call, enabling greater flexibility to adapt to these demands. But how does slicing work in practice? A target customer, for example public safety, may require different applications. each with unique communication requirements. Together, these requirements form the Service Level Agreement, or SLA, between the customer and the CSP. The CSP will create a network slice based on the SLA. The service orchestrator in the CSP's network works with controllers for the RAN, core, and transport to automatically set up slices of network resources in each of these domains. 
These connect together to form an end-to-end -end slice of network resources, from the end user equipment to the data center where the application is running. Focusing on the IP routing transport domain, the Nokia Network Services Platform, a software-defined networking platform, uses its transport slice controller function to set up connectivity for the public safety transport slice between the RAN and the core endpoints. It does this by setting up services, tunnels, and paths using, for example, EVPN over traffic engineered segment routing tunnels. The routers in the path will allocate resources to this service to create the transport section of the end-to-end -end service slice. This full automation not only saves operational costs, but also provides a fast and accurate service setup. Each application in the public service slice has its own class of service and is prioritized, shaped, queued, and scheduled as appropriate based on the SLA. Each slice is guaranteed its own SLA across the transport network, keeping the traffic on each slice separate and preventing competition for bandwidth or priority. An SDN function that will be critical for 5G is automated traffic engineering. In this example, we're using segment routing, but other techniques such as RSVPTE are available. Using its path computation element function, the NSP computes the best path across the backhaul network for each of the customer's five applications based on their requirements. For each of these paths, the PCE downloads a service label and other routing labels to the ingress router. The service label identifies that it is one of the applications of the public safety slice. These labels can be general, or they can be specific if you have load balancing or latency requirements. When the packet arrives at its destination, the DC gateway router removes the last label, reads the service label, and processes the payload forwarding it on to the public safety application. By automating SDN-based traffic engineering to create end-to-end -end backhaul paths, time and cost are reduced, making it far more efficient than manually setting paths at every node. If a fault occurs, the adjacent network routers will detect it immediately. And we'll use a local fault recovery technique such as the topology independent loop free alternate to reroute traffic to the best available alternate path. The routers report the changing conditions to the NSP at the same time. Should there be an issue with this new path, the PCE will compute an alternative path that meets the SLA requirements, downloading a new label stack to the ingress node. Nokia IP routers have a scalable statistics collection infrastructure with counters tracking performance metrics, such as delay, jitter, and packet drops. They continuously report these metrics via telemetry to the NSP. With a full end-to-end -end view of the transport network, the NSP can automatically react to changing network conditions, proactively avoiding congestion while ensuring optimal routing performance and effective network utilization. SDN automation is critical for 5G service creation. And IP routing innovations work together to provide a flexible platform to support new 5G era services. Together they provide everything you need to accommodate future application requirements and capitalize on new 5G business opportunities. All right, so <clears throat> ganon, ganon katindi <laughs> ang routing and switching in the core network, guys. So, have you enjoyed the video presentation before we proceed? 
Have you enjoyed the small break? Yes, thank you. So that's the simple way on how to understand why redundancy and other routing uh, techniques. Yan po yung simpler way on how to understand. Uh, lalong lalo na if uh, you are engaged in uh, networking devices or you are, you know, you want to go to the IT industry. So ganun po kasimple magintindi what are those terminologies na yun. Parang mahirap sa sa amin, ganun, this and that. But uh, if you read a lot, so you will fully understand. And maybe you are ready for what? For taking an exam, just like Cisco, di ba? So, okay. Now we are in the 6G devices. So, what do you think? What what will be the devices for a 6G? Okay. So, what do you think, guys? So, here. Again, this is a review for the connectivity, as I've said before. Okay. So, because of that, that day, ang evolution is on the user equipment na side at saka BTS na side but right now almost all of the network should evolve okay so kagaya nito so if we will add especially in 5G if we will add a network layer for the what network layer for the kaya na sinabi ko nung yung for monitoring management uh, orchestrating the network in the core network. So there should be an application layer for that. And 6G can also uh, enhance further these uh, uh, layers of the network. Okay? So ganito yun. And of course, hindi lang sa uh, network side, pati rin sa product side. So from phones, smartphones, until... Very, very smartphones, and we don't know in 2030 what will be the phones, but other companies, well-known and not so well-known, they uh, what invented some prototypes. So pag sinabing prototype, hindi pa yan binibenta. They are making such prototypes so that they have a basis na pwede palang ito sa 6G na ano smart devices okay so kaya nito iPhone siguro ito yung pinaka number one pa rin na phone ngayon di ba so iPhone ano yung ano yung uh, technological evolution niya di ba and of course for the smartphones ito from five from from before now and maybe in the future ito na yung mga technological advancements mga innovations di ba as you can see, meron ang foldable, meron ang wearable, di ba? And even tab tablets and laptops, yung, yung iba siguro, pwede nang lagyan ng mga SIM card, di ba? And yung ibang chipsets, pwede nang, pwede nang makakonek sa 5G siguro, we don't know, and even Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7. Okay, so ngayon, what? is their vision sa 6G. So, their vision, kung merong smart devices, meron silang tinatawag na companion devices. It's like a device or a wearable na nagkaroon na ng learning capability. Intelligence. So, kaya nga tinawag companion. Companion or a partner, it means your partner or your companion can also give you some instructions, uh, reminders sa'yo that you have a certain activity that you need to attend. Parang ganun. So for 6G, as their vision, this will be the rise of companion devices. So napaka, napakaganda, di ba? AI, machine learning, deep learning, and even intelligence can be embedded in these companion devices. Diba? Do you agree, guys? Do you agree? Okay, so, eto. These are just examples, but not yet commercialized. Ha? So, merong companion type na 
smartphones, merong wearables, headsets, clothing, skin patches, and hearables. Which is itong hearables, napaka-important ito sa mga ating PWDs. So ito, ito yung mga inindento, but not yet really commercialized. So kay Apple, Apple Healthcare ang tawag. Si MediaTek, sensors naman, pero napakaraming sensors. Diba? So, very, very interesting talaga, guys. Very, very interesting in the future for 6G. Ito naman, wearables with ano, 360 degree camera. Matindi. And of course, ano yung pwede gamitin pag mga 360 degrees camera? Diba sa mga industry? Sa mga planta pwede, di ba? Of course, ito naman, si Qualcomm, nag-invento rin, so hindi rin nagpapatalo. Iba naman sa kanya. Convergence of one wearable and also uh, compatible siya sa XR. Okay? Ito naman. So it is just a review of what's an XR. So XR... Merong VR, merong AR, meron din XR, but this one, this is the probable, posible na mga kumpanya na maggagawa ng pang 6G na wearable. Posible na mga companies, di ba? Of course, may ginawa si Enreal. Okay? Ito rin si Qualcomm, gumawa siya but more Uh, more focus on the sensory senses natin. May mga sensors dyan. And pwede 4G and 5G enabled siya. You see? Even sa glass, andun na yung mga parameters na makikita mo. ba diba? Para nang si Iron Man. Okay. So, of course, because of 6G and XR plus yung mga wearables, very, very, very applicable sa trabaho. Lahat-lahat na, na nagsuot na siya ng wearables, companion device, nasa trabaho siya, 6G na ang network, tapos immersive reality pa ang meeting nila. So, all in one na lahat-lahat na. So, kompleto yung meeting. ba diba? Ang ganda. And of course, ito naman si Qualcomm, naglabas din siya ng kanyang prototype. Ito, XR glasses. XR glasses. And of course, hindi pwede mawawala ang form factors because this this form factor is very important for uh, XR devices. Okay? So slow, slowly form factors uh, performance is slow, slowly uh, changing and enhancing all of these uh, probable 6G companion devices. Okay? So ang dami. Hindi lang 5G, yung iba pwedeng Wi-Fi enabled din. Itong mga XR devices. Pero mga prototypes pa siya, guys. Okay? And of course, XR Evolution Roadmap. Meron din silang ginawang roadmap. Kung ano yung gagawin nila ng mga futuristic na mga devices. So, ang very interesting and promising talaga. Analogy to smartphones. <laughs> very immense. Of course, pag mayroong mga technological advancements, mga visions, meron ding mga challenges. So, ito yung kanilang mga challenges daw na gusto nila or kailangan nilang i-improve. Okay, guys? And of course, si Tesla, nagawa din siya ng, ng wearable, si Tesla. So, ang tawag niya, Tesla suit. And of course, si Vodafone, isa sa mga worldwide na known na uh, network operator so this they they uh, uh, introduced first 5G haptic rugby tackle so ibig sabihin kahit na hologram ka you can still feel yung mga senses mo para kang tinakel down para kang inintercept sa rugby because of those haptic senses sensory networks di ba tapos powered by 5G daw. But, so that's very interesting, di ba? And of course, eto. This is the last untapped 
emotional body senses na hindi pa natin ma- 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 magagamit sa 6G but maybe in the future we don't know baka magagawa sila ng wearable na pwede lang gamitin yung pang amoy so ganun katindi yan na yung last sa internet of senses internet of senses grabe gagawa sila ng wearable grabe pala so eto para sa ating mga PWD na kapatid hearables meron na din uh, prototype at saka sana uh, magiging commercialized ito powered by 6G in the future because it has many functions it can be an, a hearing aid internet or voice active protection security so on and so forth so napaka laking uh, importansya at saka halaga ito para sa mga PWDs natin di ba na may uh, uh, kapansanan sa pandinig okay and of course ito just a review internet of senses by Ericsson grabe magbe-venture out sila nito they will be investing on this one it's one of the 10 hot consumer trends daw magiging uso so we will see because this is just still a vision but we don't know maybe it will be a reality in the near future di ba and ito leakable screen <laughs> so nakakatawa man tingnan but ito yung taste Leakable screen, meron ng gumagawa ng prototype. So, <laughs> uh, it's it's really funny but uh, it's it's still a device na inimbento nila, di ba? Grabe, leakable screen. Sa 6G daw in the future. <laughs> okay, and of course, ito yung pinaka-importante, low energy or extremely low power devices na wearables. Powered by 6G. So, according to Entity Docomo, ito yung isa sa mga vision nila. Diba? Napaka-promising talaga. And of course, we are in 2021. So, 2022 na po. I hope many more emerging technologies and devices will come. And I hope 6G will be, you know, a promising technology. Kung hindi pa tayo contento sa 5G, how much more si 6G kaya, di ba? We don't know. At least you are very well informed na with my webinar. And of course, tapos na po. Thank you very much, ISEP Laguna and ISEP Singapore. Thank you, Technical Working Group. Thank you po, ISEP National. And thank you sa mga officers and Technical Working Group, moderators behind the scenes. And of course, hindi ba natin makakalimutan Ito, yung ginagawa ko every time sa webinar ko. Uh, ito po yung pabaon ko sa inyo, guys. According to Brian Herbert, the capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill and the willingness to learn is a choice. So, depende na sa inyo kung gusto nyo matuto. But, you know, uh, kung may time kayo, uh, it's, I think it's better to learn and to, to read and to study. Okay? So, good luck. Uh, future engineers and thank you po I said Laguna I said Singapore thank you and good afternoon maraming salamat po thank you all right thank you so much sir your knowledge about telecommunications seems to know no bounds we are left astonished with some of the biggest improvements and game-changing features of 5G and 6G even more. We can't wait to experience the benefits of this system in our daily lives, as it is a privilege to belong in a generation where innovation initially began. Truly commendable speaker, everybody, let's give Engineer Sajid Makabalang a generous round of applause and appreciation. Okay. Oh, hello, hello. Okay. Okay, so before we start our Q&A, 
Uh, again, we will remind everyone that you are only allowed to post questions on the Q&A mechanism on the online meeting software and not on the chat box. We will only acknowledge questions on the Q&A box. So that's it. So let's start now. Okay. So for the first question. So for the first question po, sa 3G, 3G po ba yung nexus point ng wireless telecom? Okay, sir. Uh, hello po, sir. Sir Sajid. Ah, yes. Oh, yes po. Ito po yung first Sorry, question. Uh, <laughs> okay, Sorry. so with regards to... Okay. Uh, hello po, sir. Medyo choppy po tayo, sir. Uh, hello? Yes. So let's try again, po, sir. Mic this po. Okay, am I clear now? Okay, a little bit, po, sir. Medyo choppy pa rin po. Eh. Okay, uh, am I clear? Yes, po. No? Thank you so much. Uh, okay, sir. so, uh, yes. Uh, sa 3G po ba yung Nexus Point ng wireless telecom? I'm not sure about this one, but uh, maybe it's it's a company. It's the name of a company, maybe. So, yun lang po. Okay, po. So, yun po. So, maybe it's the name of a company daw po, according to Sir Sajid. So, thank you, sir. Sir, so for the next question, sir, sino po yung mga na-award ng frequency for 5G sa Pilipinas? Yun po? Actually, <laughs> actually yung na-award of course, na na-award po yung mga 5G frequencies, yung nababayad. So, that is mainly all of them. Smart Globe and uh, Dito. Di ba? Kung sino yung ano, nabigyan ng... Uh, uh, NTP or Notice to Proceed at saka Prankisa. So, sila na po yung merong uh, working 5G frequencies. So, those are all the telecom operators right now. Three. Three of them. Thank you. So, yun po. Thank you po, sir. For the next question, sir, what can you say on the role of photo-optic coupled CPU, motherboard, and server units in 1 millisecond over 1 MB evolution in NGN core with Five and six generation mobile networks, one millisecond latency roadmap. Are they interrelated or independent of each other? Thanks. Actually, for me, they should be uh, uh, independent with each other because in 5G, there is what we call uh, uh, disaggregation. Before in LTE, in LTE, there is what we call the uh, carrier carrier aggregation because the sole purpose of carrier aggregation was, is to aggregate the bandwidth so that we can uh, achieve a more robust bandwidth or uh, throughput speed, download speed. Okay, But right now in 5G, we need to disaggregate most of the network elements. So going back to the question, of course, we need to, to uh, you know, uh, it is not uh, really interrelated in a sense, but they should be uh, working as independent uh, with each other because sa 5G po, pag, pag naging disaggregated na po yung network, many companies, other proprietary companies like networking, ICT companies just like Cisco or for any well-known uh, networking device vendor po, pwede na po silang uh, sumali. Pwede na pong uh, mag-operate or even interoperable yung kanilang uh, networking devices other than Huawei, Nokia, Ericsson. Kasi sila kasi yung parating 
bumebenta eh. Di ba guys? Sila yung parating bumebenta. But now, if we're talking about uh, disaggregating the networks, many companies can venture their business and they can use their products in the core network. So, of course, photo-optic uh, CPUs, I'm sure it, it, it will be, uh, for me, uh, very, very uh, important also. And they need to, of course, if there is an upgrade in the technology, of course, these motherboard and server units should be upgraded. Kaya nga ang tawag, next generation uh, core, di ba? Di ba? Guys, okay, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the answer, sir. So we hope that you answered the question. So for the next, okay, pa. No cards. So let's go. So do we need 5G right now? How about prioritizing provincial areas to have 4G networks? Uh, <laughs> by the way, this is this is uh, a bit uh, subjective, at saka controversial na question para sa akin because. If you are the user, of course, ako gusto ko na ng mabilis, di ba? So I need 5G. But because of this question kasi, this is medyo subjective kasi the one who can enhance 4G first before deploying 5G is the operators. Sila pa rin. Yung mga operators pa rin ang merong say or merong decision na yung mga, you know, other provincial areas that are considered unserved and underserved and those services there and even the, the signal levels there are very, very worse. So, syempre, this question has a point, but the only entity that can suffice your question po is yung telecom operators they need to finish deploying their project for 4G until such time that if the 4G cells are enough in the provincial areas, uh, not to mention prioritizing, that's the time pwede nang i-upgrade yung existing 4G. So this is more on starting prioritizing the 4G cells by those uh, telecom operators. So, yan lang po yung magagawa natin as users. We need to wait because this is their, of course, this is their business, uh, first and foremost, and they are the ones who are investing on rolling out 4G kasi konti pa lang yung 4G sa mga liblib na lugar. So, they have their plan. I'm sure they have uh, plans on their projects on when or who will be the next priority. Okay? So, ganun lang po. Thank you. So, thank you so much, po. Okay. So, for the next question, how about the 5G distance po? May improve pa ba ang 5G network distance like 4G? Yes. Definitely, yes. As I told you, if uh, you guys know about the theory behind the formula no wavelength, the higher the frequency, the shorter the range. But the benefit, mas maganda yung kanyang bandwidth. Many frequency channels or resource units or resource blocks can be utilized. But the only thing, yung trade-off or yung kapalit niya is maliit na footprint. Maliit na signal lang yung aabutin ng 5G. So how can we compensate that one? It's very easy. Just add more 5G cells. So if we're talking about just add more 5G cells, doon na naman papasok yung expansion, network uh, infrastructure. So yan ang ibig ko sabihin. So this is also related to the previous question because it will or it is connected due to the cost and capital ng operator. Halimbawa, ito yung design. Uy, napakaganda. Padamihin lang natin ng 5G cells. But ang tanong is how and when will be implemented. That's the, that's the, the, the main point there. And it is related closely 
with ano, pera. That's the only solution, sir. Technically speaking, that's the only solution. Add more 5G cents. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, yes. Paul, sir. That's it. A few more so, questions, sir. So for the... Is this the last question, Pop? Oh, there's uh, more, Papa. There's Papa. Papa. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. So, so since almost all advantages of wireless services, voice, video, data communication, etc., were already catered by 5G and 6G, what do we expect now from 7G, 8G, and beyond? So, <laughs> okay. Papa? So I, I'm. Uh, we, me, me, napaka sino to? Uh, anonymous, sir, or may pangalan? <laughs> so anonymous, box, sir. <laughs> Ah, see, si sir, Angel of Beltran. I think I'm very familiar. Okay, uh, I'm 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 not, you know, I'm not a, a very optimistic person, but I am very, you know, very. Uh, I'm I'm open for expectations. Ikanga. So of course, kait kait ako or kayo guys. Uh, we we need seven G, seven generation or eight generation, but uh, we still need to further wait kasi gaya na sinabi ko kung gusto natin ng technological advancements or if we need it a, 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 a bit faster to advance to 7G or 8G pa yan or even 9 and 10 meron kasing proseso whether we like it or not there is a process and one of those process is the 10 year plan 10 year plan so you need to count every 10 years so you need to count every 10 years so you know, uh, needless to say whether we like it or not we need to wait every 10 years but dito sa webinar itong 6G it is already promising diba guys it is already promising so what more can we expect in 7G or 8G uh, maybe we are already inside the machine maybe maybe that's the answer I can give <laughs> thank you Okay, thank you so much, Pastor. So, for from Mr. Joel Bermudez Bahador. So, I hope I said that right. Any idea if where are we now in the Philippines in the implement, implementation of 5G in terms of application? We cannot fully implement Industry 4.0 when we cannot go to this level, Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, of course, uh, my own idea... Industry 4.0, even IoT, Internet of Things. My own technical idea, I, I think, I, I yes, I already mentioned this one in my other uh, previous webinars. The only thing that we can do so that uh, we can implement our dream. Of course, Industry 4.0 is a, is a good uh, application powered by 5G. But the only thing, what's lacking, o ano yung, ang, ang, ang problema lang dito, yung kulang dito sa Pilipinas is the infrastructure. We need to, to fully complete yung sa infrastructure development phase po muna. Bali, ang makaka-avail ang makaka pa lang ng 5G as of this moment, sir, while they are deploying, expanding, rolling out their projects, yung mga consumers lang muna. Pero yung mga malalaking, malalaking requirements, yung mga industry, logistics, manufacturing, healthcare, even industry 4.0 in general, kailangan muna ma completo yung or well expounded or well expanded ang um, network muna sir network uh, infrastructure then once that will be done i'm sure i'm very very sure my technical uh, knowledge that ang uh, next na gagawin nila yung mga applications na para sa mga industriya and also including industry for 4.0. If you want to have a resource regarding uh, 5G network slicing for companies, meron na pong in-implement sa ibang countries, pero wala pa dito sa Pilipinas. So we will be gearing 
to that point, sir. But for me, yung idea ko po, we cannot fully implement unless yung network infrastructure is really, really in place po. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so thank you so much po, sir. So I think, uh, doon na po muna natin tapusin na oh, masyado ng mahaba, sir. So, uh, so <laughs> no problem. Punta po muna tayo dito, sir, kasi may nagsasabi po sa chat box. Yung iba po kasi is, uh, na, meron po silang personal matter. So what should we do po kaya? So they're asking for the evaluation and attendance form po. Okay. So let's go na lang po daw. Okay, so so please proceed po, Ms. Julie. So, okay, so let's go here. So we will now move on of the certificate to our research speaker for today, Engineer Makabalang. You have been a commendable, inspiring, and amazing educator this blessed morning. We wish you an amazing career along with your future in divorce. Thank you so much, sir, and nabuhay po kayo. The Institute of Electronics Engineers of the Philippines, ISEP, with the collaboration of ISEP Laguna Chapter with accreditation number 31 and ISEP Singapore Chapter with accreditation number 38, hereby awarded the Certificate of Appreciation to Engineer Sajid M. Makabalang with continuing professional development accreditation number ECE 20090013283 for imparting his knowledge and expertise in the fiber online event introduced in the future, held on the 5th day of March 2022, 7.45 a.m. to 1 p.m. via Zoom. Signed by the ISEP Laguna Governor Engineer Mary Grace P. Biano and the ISEP Singapore Governor Engineer Arnie C. Gonzalez. Okay, so thank you so much po. So, yan po ang certificate ng ating so, speaker, Engineer Sajid N. Makabalang. Thank you po ulit, sir sa inyong pag-share ng knowledge sa atin and sa pinakaintay po ng lahat ang ating posting of evaluation form. So, ito po yung QR code. Uh, participants, you can take the picture po. So, yan po yung ating evaluation form. So, directly, madadirect na po kayo dun sa side na kung saan mag-fill up kayo and then there's a quiz po na kailangan nyo sagutan for you to be able na ma-recognize sa ating certificate. So, thank you po. Okay, so let's proceed naman po sa ating special announcement. So as you can see here po, meron po tayong 5th Annual General Membership Meeting and Convention uh, with the title Realms of Knowledge from Cyber to Outer Space. So ayan po. So it will be held on March 26 and 27, 2022 at 8 o'clock a.m. to 7 p.m. via Zoom webinar. Uh, it is a free registration po. So that's good. So for the next naman po is ISEP Singapore chapter is looking forward for qualified yes. candidates to run for position as board of director po. Ayan. So deadline of filing of candidacy on March 19 to 2022. Please stand by for more details and announcements via the ISEP FP page and WhatsApp group chat. So yun po, ito pong ating special announcement. And as you can see po, meron po tayong shirt. Yan. So get this ISEP shirt for only 600 pesos. Okay, plus shipping fee. Yan po. Meron po tayong available sizes dyan. Uh, meron po tayong 14s. Okay, extra small, small, medium, and large. So you can see that. Ayan po. So, so you can scan the QR code and please fill up the Google Forms for reservation or email isaplaguna at gmail.com for more details. So that's good po. Thank you, sir. Okay, so for our closing remarks, he is the current internal vice governor of ISEP Laguna chapter. He's a full-time instructor at Pamantasan ng Kabuyao. Okay, so he specializes in control system and currently taking his master's degree at Malayan Colleges Laguna. Please welcome Engineer Eugene B. Agustin for the closing remarks. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, are uh, you Naririnig ako. 
Christmas. Oh, okay, yes, Pauser. Thank you. Yes, Pauser. Thank you. So, we are now down to, to the last part of this webinar, which I know you've been waiting for. But before I formally end this webinar, please allow me to express my gratitude to all of you and to the speakers and organizers. Thank you to all attendees for today's webinar. We hope that you learn a lot uh, from the topics discussed by our speaker. Please continue attending and supporting the events organized by ICEP Laguna and Singapore Chapter and other ICEP chapters. We will continue to provide webinars or trainings for your professional development. Also, thank you to uh, Engineer Gerhard Tan for accepting our invitation despite your busy schedule for sharing short but very informative insights in telecom about telecommunication technology. Indeed, you are truly an expert in the field of telecommunication. Also to our uh, resource speaker today, Engineer Sajid Makabalang. Uh, thank you so much, Engineer, for sharing, our, uh, sharing your knowledge and expertise about the telecommunication technology. We know you're a very, very uh, busy person, but still, you accept our invitation to become the speaker for today's webinar. We really learned a lot today from the different existing technologies in the mobile cellular technologies, um, 5G technology fundamentals, and the future 6G, and how it will shape our future. Thank you to our uh, partner in organizing this pre webinar, ICEP um, Singapore, headed by engineer Arnie um, Gonzalez. Congratulations to all of us. We have a successful webinar today and looking forward for more collaboration with your chapter. To other ISEP officers, um, Engineer Paolo Laguna and Engineer uh, Jedaya Portolano, thank you so much for your assistance. To ISEP Laguna chapter officers headed by Governor uh, Mary Grace Beagno, thank you for your um, thank you for your help in organizing this uh, event. Congrats to all of us and looking for more successful events in the future. And to ICEP Laguna Chapter Advisor, Engineer Joel Bahadur, thank you for your guidance and support. And to uh, also to, uh, lastly, to Pamantasan ng Kabuyao EC Students Technical Committee headed by Mikaela Arzaga and to MCs Carl and Jeline, thank you for your help and really appreciate your efforts and your time. So being able to communicate effectively is perhaps the most important of all life skills. So from face-to-face -face communication, prehistoric smoke signal through courier using a burden first, to remote communication by Zoom, Google Meet, FB Messenger, and other communication platforms, it allows us to interact with other people from another place. With that, with the advancement of technology, uh, telecommunication technology, it improves the way how people communicate with each other. With that, I formally end this webinar. Thank you so much to all of you. God bless us all and keep safe, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, that's very good. Thank you so much, Paul, sir, for your closing remark. It's our honor to be a part of this wonderful ICEP event. So that's good, Paul. Okay, before we officially end our event, we would like to recognize Engineer Mary Grace Piano, Engineer Eugen Agustin, Ma'am Sir, thank you po for making this event a reality with your wisdom and guidance. Along with our collaborators in Singapore, led by ICEP Governor Engineer Arnie Gonzalez, we look forward for more collaboration. Sir, please accept our sincere gratitude and also to our resource speakers for today, Engineer Sajid Makabalang, thank you for sharing your knowledge to us. Students, engineers, and all the participants, thank you so much for your patience and most eager participation. You made this webinar meaningful for all of us. We truly appreciated this opportunity to be part of this huge event. With honesty, this is our first time hosting an exclus exclusive event, and we are humbled and privileged to serve you, hoping this is not the end, but only the beginning for more upcoming events. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, that's good. So, bago po tayo magpaalam, no? Uh... Kindly open your camera lang po for the last, okay? Para lang po sa ating documentation. Ano po? So, pa-open na po. Okay. Good. Sino nagka-count? 
Hindi na screen capture. Wala ata singular sa Jim. <laughs> Oo nga, nawala. Nawala si Sir Sajid. Ah, hello po, ma'am. So, Nag-lunch na daw yata si Sir Sajid. So, wala po akong control sa ano. Ayan. Okay na pa. So, ako na po mag-screenshot, ma'am. So, one. Sige, go na. Okay, let's go. So, one, two, three, and go. So, that's good. Thank you so much po. Okay. Thank you, thank you po. I said Singapore, Sir Paul. Thank you, everyone. Sir Judaya. This is Sister Arnie. So, thank you very much po. Looking forward po for more collaborations with you. In the Ay, future. Definitely, ma'am. And uh, congratulations po, ma'am Grace. First, ano. Tsaka so yung po, mga ano natin. Po, yung kundi mga... dahil po sa tulong ng ISEP Singapore. Thank you very much po. Tsaka yung mga student, ano natin, magaling. Opo. Oh, oh. Kanina ko pa po sila chinachat doon sa isang ano namin. Nabi ko, um, proud kami sa kanila. Tsaka na ipamalita ko na po doon sa mga ano namin. Doon sa GC namin sa engineering. <laughs> Na-post ko na rin sila. Opo. Oh, Sir Ronald. Oh, on no more po. ano, some note uh, sa Ronald, ano. Condolences po ano. Oh, sige, uh, leave na yata yung mga ano natin, ano. Yan sila mag-leave oh, muna. Yung mga attendees natin parang ayo pa umalis. Ayo pa eh. mag-leave ano. Okay, din na po. Thank you po. Thank you po sa mga attendees. So, And, looking forward po sa next ano pa niyo. Next uh, webinars pa. Yes, yes. Opo. Start lang to ma'am. Tsaka ano, sabi nga, pag ano natin, pagpapractisin pa natin ng madami yung mga MC natin. Na. Opo. Pagyan pa natin ng maraming chance. Yan. Pero Opo. maganda. So far, maganda po yan. Tsaka ano, natural na natural. <laughs> Alangan na po sir, kung alam nyo lang kung paano kami nagkaanuhan ng mga yan. Kung sino ang mag mc <laughs> Kapag ano, ano i-import din namin Glenn. sila sa amin. Ah, yes po. <laughs> diba Glenn? Import ano? namin kayo ha, sir. Yes, ano, Carl? Ah, um, yes po, sir. Sorry uh, po, sir. Ang dami po po namin errors kasi po first time lang namin. Eh. Hindi naman oh, first time sa inyo, sir. Eh. Ano pa po yung mga bala? Practice pa yung mga yan. Si Jeline. Hindi naman, hindi naman halata. Wala namang... <laughs> Thank you so much po, sir. Salamat po. Maraming salamat po. Galing-galing. For first timers, galing-galing. Oh, Thank diba? so much po, sir. Oh, may mga susunod pa tayo. Kayo daw ulit. <laughs> Sabi ni Sir Eugene. Lena tsaka ano. Uh, Jeline. Vlog ko lang ng konti. Meron yata ang 